Well, hello there. Hello. And welcome to Needles <coughs> at the Ready. I am Kevin. I'm Ray. Today is Saturday, January 6th, 2024, and this is episode 102 Woohoo! of our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and all the fun stuff that goes along with that. And this is our first episode of 2024. Yes, so Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And it has been four weeks. I know. It was a, a double fortnight. It was. <laughs> is well, that a thing? What I don't do you know. say? I have no idea. What would four weeks be instead of a fortnight? One month. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. So, why haven't we been here? We both had COVID. Oh, I thought you were asking me a question. No. I thought it was rhetorical. I it is. So, we both had COVID. We did. Ray got COVID the week before Christmas, Why? and I tested positive for COVID the day of Christmas. So... Um, we're just getting back really into the swing of things mm -hmm. in, um... Boy, it kicked our butts. It just did. Just have to say. Yeah. So... Kevin was a great nurse. Thank and, you. He must have learned from the best. And Ray took care of me when he was home. He, fortunately for him, I was home <laughs> the entire time. And when I was sick, he went back to work. I did. So... I know, I was um, hoping for, like, another day, but then, like... You know when you have to force yourself to take care of the sick people, like you have to put your needs. You should always put your needs first, right? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you save everyone else. What? Did you ever hear that saying? No, that's selfish. It's not selfish. I mean, I guess how not. could you save other people, people if, if you're, you're not saved? Right. Okay. Yeah. Like it's a parent's instinct to put the oxygen mask on their kids first. Correct. Right. But then, if they pass out, then there's nobody to put the oxygen mask on the kids. So you got to put it on yourself first so that you can stay alive enough to put. That took a turn, you know. <laughs> so don't know where we're going. Don't that. know either. But so, it was a it was a rough it was a rough couple of weeks. We did reschedule our Christmas. We were supposed to host it, um, so we are going to be doing another um, like a Christmas redo. Yeah, just with the family, exchange gifts, have some nice dinner, like at the end of this month. Correct. Yeah. So we'll let's do some ad mini stuff real quick. So okay. we. Obviously, because we were sick, everything got delayed. So we were delayed shipping out the prizes from the crochet now that we had and from the something else. What other thing did we have? I don't know. We had another one. It was a big one. I don't remember. Um, but we shipped them out on, I think I shipped them out on Wednesday, possibly. So if you're waiting for those, they are on their way. We are still waiting to hear back from the winners of the crochet patterns that Austin, um, Austin Does Crochet, right? Yeah. Austin Does Crochet um, offered. So there were six winners. They We flashed your names in the previous episode, so go back and check that out. We have also wrapped up our gifts by Folk. Good job. So we will go through Instagram, choose those winners, and we'll make our donation to... We'll have all that information <laughs> next week. Yeah. yeah. The next episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we have to go through and see how much um, we're going to be donating. I think we decided it was up to $1,000, depending on how many... Um, people use the hashtag. People use the hashtag, which will be exciting. So we'll have all that information. And then we'll have a link to, if you feel like you would like to donate as well, um, to the charity that we are donating to. We'll have all that information down below. Um, I just want to go through the process just to make sure that it's easy to make a donation. I'm sure it is. Um, and then we'll have all that information uh, next week, next uh, fortnight. Yes. And then if you've emailed us within the past four weeks, we're slowly getting through those because we really are. We're just like, yeah, guys, I just was... started getting back into the swing of things within the past couple of days. Yeah, so it was really rough. Yeah, it was not. Um, it was not a good time. No, I don't recommend it. No, <laughs> highly, highly. Like if we, you know, if you're going to get COVID, at mm -hmm. least do it at the same time. It would have been so much easier if we both had COVID at the same time. Although, I don't know, because you were actually very productive. Oh. Not productive, but, like, you know, because we were getting ready for, um, for like, the holidays and, like, there was still, like, shopping to do and you went to the post office a couple of times to drop off some orders. So, like, if we were both down and out, True. we would be down and out for, like, it would we would be zero, zero productive. I think I have COVID brain for I, three weeks, you know? Instead, so, it was only about two weeks. So, other than that, what else has happened? After well, the last episode, we went to Skane. We had a great time. In Rhode Island, Skane Yarn Shop, who's owned by Lori and um, Justine's the Muscle. And <laughs> Justine's the Muscle? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And it was a lovely time. They host a Christmas party. Uh, we said we wanted to go, so we didn't Sorry. share that just so that, you know, it'd be a nice little fun day. So we got to see a lot of familiar faces, people that we've seen there before. And, that and it was a met. potluck. It so was a potluck. Everybody brought a little dish, which was really cool. The food was fantastic. food was fantastic. There and was a, so much food. Yeah. And of course, there were competitions, right? Who brought the best dish? Then there was a... Um, trivia. Trivia. And who won? Kevin. This guy. Yeah, you did. Um, Do you know why I won, though? I won actually because of this. You're telling your secrets. Podcast and how we talk about needle sizes. Oh yeah, a couple that of I like. One of the questions was what? How many millimeters is? I think it was like a US seven or six. And because we say it so often on here, I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And but then there were some tricky ones. It was like what year or what was? What's the actual address of Skein Yarn the Shop? Unit the number. unit number. The unit number. It was really fun. So um, if I remember, it's one, two, three. We we had a um, we had a little a little whispering in our ears to kind of Shh. help the process along. Well, it would have you got it anyway. That's true. You started answering before with the whispers. I waited for the whispers, um, and I still I still ended up in like last place. So so yeah. So we did that. Yeah. Then we, we got COVID out. the next week. We did. You but got we, COVID. Then we went I out got... for drinks afterwards. Oh with, my! With um to the oyster bar to the oyster bar, which is a wonderful place we went there last time and yes. it was so good like i w- we were i was full from um all the from stuff all the stuff we ate over at skein but that didn't stop me from ordering a gigantic <laughs> bowl you ordered of, a huge dinner. i know what was it what did i get the chicken you ordered the chicken pot the pasta with the chicken yeah what was the sauce though it was so good it was like an olive vodka like penny olive vodka with chicken or something it was like the, it's the best pasta dish i feel like i've ever had so i had it last time i had to you know sometimes you just have to um so yeah it was it was really fun. We I mean we could have sat for hours. We closed the place down. We did. We were there for about three hours. I know it went by so fast. And I could have kept going. Yeah. If I and I think if we had mentioned it, we probably would have like gone someplace. I out. think we were all hinting at like, hey, one more bar. Is this the end? Oh, I don't want it to end. I know. And then nobody was really like. They're just lovely. Um, lovely. Yeah. So glad that we've become friends with them over Me this too. really. Cool short period of time if you really... feel like we've known them forever yeah for sure you know? um so highly so... recommend if you have not checked out skein yarn shop uh in rhode island it is make it a destination for yourself it is such a welcoming environment yeah. great selection of yarns but it's the community that really um that really is the heart of the place and they did such a great job building that community and it was because of that community that um not forced us but i don't want to say like you twisted our arms but like that really prompted us to to check them out you know like it's different when a a yarn shop owner says oh come check out my shop but when you have you know community members coming up to us like that happened at rhinebeck and i know you guys probably all know the story but i mean before we even met Lori and justine yeah we spoke to like four or five people that were like at different times like have you tried skein yarn shop before so yeah we would like to be that community for you. So please go check out Skein Yarn Shop if you haven't already. Uh, Lori and Justine have a podcast called The Skein Scoop, which is really great. Um, and then um, Justine does a lot of, on Instagram, she does a lot of, um, and Lori too, does a lot of like videos of what just came into the shop and different yarns. That's how we learned about the budgie colorway yeah. that came over there. So anyway, check them out. We can't say enough about them. I gush, don't gush, know. gush, 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 gush. So that was something else that, I did. So one, this was really fun. I don't even know if I have a picture of it, to be honest with you. So we were talking prior to going, um, and we were like, oh, we should bring a little gift for Lori and oh, Justine. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had dyed up a colorway based on their logo for the podcast. And so I named the colorway Skein Scoop, but I don't have a picture of it. I know Justine had posted it in her stories i think and maybe skeins and it is on day either 16 or 17 of justine's vlogmas right i don't recall which one um that's great that you could even say 16 or 17 oh you probably know that because we went up there on the 15th no because we watched I, we watched it right but we watched it like the day after yeah and i don't remember like don't remember what day either. it was so yeah. yeah so that was lovely and then again oh and then in that whole this past four weeks our basement flooded twice yeah so the second time is when Ray had COVID. So yeah, it was I, rough. It was a rough. It was a rough. Weeks. It really was. That. I made many trips to the dump and many That's trips why you to yeah. um, Goodwill. See, you couldn't have been sick at the same time as me. No. So, mm. 
you know, it's all worked out. It was a very hectic couple of weeks, but we're back. And we're back. And it forced us to organize our basement. So we are in the process of getting like shelving and stuff down there. We live in a very old house. It was built in 1920. And um, so the basement is a stone foundation and it's kind of like uneven and yeah, you know, it's all that. So um, we I got don't some recommend sh- it. Right. So we got into some shelving units and different things like that um to put down there so it's yeah. kind of it was a blessing in disguise it really absolutely it kind of lit a fire under our for sure knees. um all right so that's pretty much it i think um anything upcoming the only thing really upcoming is that folk knitting live is in a couple yeah weeks, so and we're about 80 percent sure that we're gonna be going 90 percent. 90 percent now okay yeah. so it, the only thing is our christmas redo is that weekend as well so that sunday? that's sunday so we're just gonna kind of time it figure out the timing um, we'll definitely, well, 90% sure that we'll be there on Saturday, we'll, depending on timing is when we'll leave on Sunday. Correct. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So. Great. All right. Let's get into it. Wow. Um, what? Wow. Our opening was only like 11 minutes. I know. What are we, so what are we wearing? I'm only going to talk about one of what I'm wearing because the other one is a finished object. Okay. So I'm wearing the Volcano Trail Cal by Maxim Sear. It's a great shawl. It, I mean, a uh, cowl. Yeah, it is a... <clears throat> it's fingering held double, and it's faded. So all I know, honestly, is that this up here is Pistachio by Hugh Loco. So it's this. And then I believe the rest might be Amanda Knits. Oh. And it might be... One of the dragons. The dragon eggs. Yeah. Some leftover yarn yeah. from a shawl for the Harry Potter dragon eggs. That's, we got like two or three years ago, mm-hmm. probably three years ago. But. That was a fun mystery club. It's really nice because it's knit flat and it's garter and it is seamed. The, this is um, a fold over and seam together. The bottom is also fold folded over and seamed together. And then you have a seam in the back. So I think if I remember correctly, you start knitting in the round, separate, knit flat, go back to knitting in the round, seam, and then seam here, and then you duplicate stitch down the middle with color A. Really nice attention to detail there, huh? Yeah, I love this thing. It's nice. It's it's actually quite dense. Not dense. It's quite heavy. Like Yeah, it's, um, it's like thick because you're yeah. holding. It's um, bouncy. Like it's super, it's super plush. Yeah. So it is meant to be faded. Yeah. Well, I think you did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, super warm. Mm-hmm. So that is what I'm wearing. And I guess you could do DK, but I think you might lose out on some of that. You wouldn't be able to fade it. <sighs> um, I guess you could. You probably, yeah, you could. But I feel like if I'm not... You could even use a self-fading yarn, you know, one of those... Um... Yes, that I would recommend. I feel like this is, like, you knit however many rows with color A. Yeah. Then you knit a certain number of rows with color A and B held together. Mm-hmm. And then just color B, so on and so forth. So I think if you were to do it with DK, it would be a fading yarn would be the best yeah, way to do it. Yeah, they have that... What's that yarn called? Um, Mandala? I know that might be worsted, but I think it's a lighter worsted. Maybe even a DK. That might be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah Mandala. Or, I mean, you could do... Uh, There's a ton of different ones. Yeah. Any color changing your yeah, own yeah, yeah. would be great. Yeah. But yeah, yeah pattern. from what I remember, this it's been a couple years since I knit it, but mm-hmm. I do like this. Yeah, that's on my list of one day. Um, okay, I'm wearing my, my Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. This is the first one I've ever knit, and it is my absolute go-to... Favorite hat of all time. I wear it more than I think I wear any of my other knits, Absolutely. Um, put together. And then um, the, the yarn, yarn is Plies and, uh, Hellhounds. Plies and Hellhounds, which was Once Upon a Corgi. Yep. Um, back when I bought this. I can't. I think it's called Death is the colorway or Death Becomes Her or something like that. I think like it's de- Death. I think it's just called Death. Um, it's a beautiful, like... I th- I see like a bluish gray almost with some like green speckles and stuff like that. In there's there. some there's a bunch of different yeah it's black really speckles. There's some like yellowy orange ones. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a, a really pretty yeah colorway. it's a beautiful colorway. Um, and this is with her Corydale. I believe it's 100 percent Corydale. Uh, no, Corydale and 25. yeah Corydale and uh, nylon. Yeah. Um, but really um, amazing hat. It's it's my favorite one, and I've and I love this pattern. It's my favorite pattern 
or the pattern that I've knit the most for hats especially but I could never any other sock head that I've made after this I've never I've never achieved that like oh you're my new favorite or right. you know like there's something special about the color and the yarn that just works for me mm -hmm. um so I absolutely love it I've, obviously I like to wear neutrals too so it it works really really well with the majority of my um, outfits and then my second um, most worn of all knits that I've ever done my very favorite uh, sweater slash card my only cardigan but my very favorite sweater is uh, the Ranger by Jared Flood everything seemed to work with this I love the like I, I wear this like over pajamas or sweats yes. like when we go to Rhinebeck or whatever like it's I wear it every single night when we get comfortable I wear it here like to you know go outside or just like now like whatever i just wanted to be comfortable um it also can be dressed up you can like their buttons i think it looks good you know when you're going out um the yarn is a one-of-a-kind yarn it's by trilogy yarns nancy over at trilogy yarns she had dyed this colorway i believe to make like a beetlejuice sweater or something like that like a long time ago i can't really remember but she had a sweaters quantity of one-of-a-kind yarn and um she knew that i loved these colors and she had reached out to me this was a couple of years ago three years ago now maybe yeah um, if I wanted the, if I wanted the yarn. Mm -hmm. So, um, I said, sure. And I just, I love, I didn't alternate skeins. I love the, the look of it, the little pooling that we have here and how everything is kind of different, but it all works very well together. Um, again, my most worn favorite sweater, Ranger by Jared Flood. Um, I highly recommend the pattern. It was knit flat, bottom up. Um, it's a, a really neat, uh, patterning it's almost like a almost like a broken rib kind yeah. of um but it's knit a little bit differently to achieve that same that same result those pattern the pattern i found was very very easy to follow like i said it was my my very first cardigan i believe my third sweater total um so i was a pretty new knitter at the time and i was able to you know to do this and i think it looks i think it looks really good yeah um a, some people have altered the collar a little bit um with what they do here to kind of maintain that that popping or that you know that rounded collar look do you see how that looks there i like it i just it's one of those just like throw on kind of things yeah. i really like the flabbiness of it i don't know it works for me so that's what i'm wearing i love it and i'm also wearing some hand knit socks yeah that is pretty much a constant yeah um but that it reminded me of two things okay so first thing is we do have a bunch of coupon codes. Trilogy oh, is one of them. Yeah. We have a link down below to a Google document that you can pull up that has the maker, the website, and the code. So it's we have Trilogy Yarns, Naughty Knitting Sacks, Scrappy Angel, Knit Swag, um, Gosh, so Katie many. Did Bags. Mm -hmm. So there are ton there's more than that, but um, those are going to be in the show notes as well as any affiliate links that we have. Um, one of those are, is Jimmy Bean's Wool. Yeah. And if you remember, I showed the their new needle binder that they were taking pre-orders for. Those are now available and shipping. I went to the site yesterday and they have um, plenty of the, I think it's five colors Great. that they have there. So if that's something you're looking for, definitely check that I out. I still need to put my order in because I would like to get one. Yeah. We saw it in the, the blue or the I have it indigo right here. I think so. We have it in gray. No, I have it in sage. Oh, I beg your pardon. So this oh, is yeah, the sage. needle binder, and I do when I say this thing's like huge. Oh, it's, it's gonna have everything that you need in it. Ridiculously big, and uh, I love that it comes with the notions in the front there. Yeah, and it. I believe the price is one hundred and twenty-five dollars mm -hmm. for this. But what's fun is that you don't have to take this whole binder with you if you're going places because it's there. The individual pages are removable. You could just grab a page and bring it with you, like yeah. if you wanted just to bring your cords and your needles or something like that, or leave pages at home and bring the binder. And you know <clears> what else is fun that I just remembered? What? Guess what happens in two days? All right, let's see. Two days is Monday. Is January eighth? I don't know. It's our four-year anniversary. <gasps> what? Yeah, I believe. Wait, I so this is our anniversary episode? Yeah. On top of it? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, it'll be four years on the 8th. Happy anniversary. I know, right? Four wow, years. Wow, that's lovely. So. Congratulations, Kev. Thanks. It's a milestone. Congratulations, too. Four years. Yeah, right. Wow. All right. So that's all. That's tough. That means I've been knitting for four years. Yeah. 
You've been crocheting much longer though. I have, but you don't crochet as no, often I started, anymore. So I've been knitting four years now in November because I started. I started this in past no, November. this past November. Yep. I knit my first, and that's where you got um, Once Upon a Corgi from because it was it was they a trunk were doing show. a trunk show at New Haven, and yeah. I want to say it was close to like their anniversary sale. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it was something like that. Yeah. Um, all right, wow. so let's talk about some more let's knitting. Talk about- I have three finished objects. I also have three finished objects. I only have two of them with me, and one of them just needs a little bit of finishing, but I'm considering it a finished object. One I do not have with me. I just have a picture of it. Okay. So one of our finished objects is the same object, so let's talk about that first. Oh, sure. All right. So we were inspired by two of our friends. Our first one is um, our friend Chevis who is Chevy Rail Stuff here on YouTube, showed this item a couple months ago on her podcast. And then about, I don't know, maybe about a month ago, our friend Carrie over at the Creative Obsession here on YouTube showed that she bought one. And then that, we watched the episode on a Thursday, and that Thursday night is our Zoom knit night. Um, Both Carrie and Chevis are a part of that. And... We were talking about it, and during that, we bought this. We sure did. Immediately. And so it these, shipped incredibly quickly, and now... This is what they are. Them. So it is a an emotional support chicken knitting kit. It comes with everything you need except for the needles and the stuffing. The um, It's so clever. Like, there's nutritional facts on the back. It's just... It's such a cool, clever packaging... They have really, really fun names and colorways of these chickens. Yes. So mine is Zach Egfron. And mine is Barack Obama, (laughs) which I think is hysterical. Like, there's Betty Egg Whites. There's... Hennifer um, Lopez. Hennifer Lopez. um, Henry Styles. Like, the names are hysterical. I know there's like an Elton John one, a Dolly Parton, a Michelle Obama, Nicki Minaj, Beyonce... Cardi B, like oh, yeah, Cardi B. There's so many. It's Cardi Beak, I think, is what yeah. it's called. So anyway, we have that link down below in our show notes. Um, the links to the chicken, but I also have a link to the um, um, the company. It's called the Knitting Tree LA. Um, they have some different yarns and things like that as well. So here, you ready? They are what? Oh my god! And I love it. I love it so much. So um, they're emotional support chickens. They're like little pillows. We sleep with them every night. Um, I do. We do. I, I'm not even kidding. No. Nope. They stay on our beds. Like when we make the bed, um, you know, each one sits like in front of our, each other's pillow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, I snuggle with them at night. And I will be honest with you, like, the, and I know it's probably not intentional, like the design of it. But this fits like it's really this, good. like it fits like my arms. Like you can change your position and how you're holding it. Um, it comes with the little eyes. So mine, um, mine's a little bit larger. I was I knit this while when I was like super sick with COVID. So I don't know if my tension was just like super loose at the time, or I was like high on medications or whatever. But my or, or if you may have overstuffed it too. Yeah, but even when you put yours like, in front of mine. Mine is still, I think, pretty... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, um, so this is Barack Obama. This is Zach Egfron. Yep. <laughs> so um, it's very, very clever how you knit this. I really enjoyed the pattern. Gives you a couple of... Uh, you can talk about yours in a second. Gives you a couple of options. Um, so I ended up crocheting one of the seams um, here together. What I liked about my yarn was that all of these little speckle pieces, do you see all of that? Like, it looks like it's patchwork, but it's not. That's all in one skein. So everything except for these stripes um, is one skein of yarn, and it's dyed like that to make it look like it's kind of patchwork. Um, And everything just worked perfectly for me. You knit, you know, you knit all these little things separately, the comb and the, you know, whatever that's called. Um, The I love my eyes. They're blue. And, um, and then you you knit a bottom piece as well, and you kind of seam it all together. I'm not the best seamer, and you, you'll see that in, in one of my next projects. 
But it, I mean, I just, it goes with the whole patchwork thing. I absolutely love it. It's my, it's one of my favorite knits of all time. Yeah, I love this thing. Yeah. Um, so like Ray said, you could buy the kit from Knitting Tree LA or you can buy the pattern on Ravelry. Right, and so, use whatever yarn you want. Yeah, and use whatever yarn. It is a worsted weight pattern. So you could use worsted weight. We've been talking about it. I'm sure you could do this in DK or fingering. Or just change the size of the chicken. Yeah, change the size of your needle and you'd be good to go. So a couple things that I did differently for mine when... Because of course you had to. Well, no. So you knit the feathers or the tail in two pieces and then you seam it. So what I did instead of binding off for my two... I put my first one on some barber cords and then when I was done with the second one I did not bind off and I did a three needle bind off with the wrong sides facing each other so that I had the seam here in the black. So I thought that was a nice little adjustment to that. Um, and then here on my stripes and you can see in this image they are three garter ridges. And I liked that it was three garter ridges and the pattern, this stripe ends up being four. So I just adjusted to make sure that this was three. I did mine two patterns. And you see the four here. There was one error in the pattern where you're doing, you're finishing this piece here, the breast piece. And it tells you to knit 14 stitches, but you actually have to knit 16. And... um. Yeah, and other than that, I, I enjoyed the pattern. I do think there could be just a little adjustment on the short row short row description in the pattern. Um, we were, I kid you not, like, on our Thursday night knit night now, there are one, two, three, four, five other people who either have knit this or are going to be knitting it because it's just such a fun... It's such a... I'm doing another one. I cannot wait to do another one. I've already got yarn picked out for it. I might undo mine a little bit because I... To restuff it? Yeah, I mattress stitched this, so I might take it out and put mm -hmm. a little more stuffing in. But then I was saying, so my idea is... I don't know where it is, though. Oh, it's down here. I saw, it's down the bottom there. I think that's it, right? One of those? Or is that not it? No, it's not it. Oh, yeah, I know. So, when I was at Skein um, a couple months ago, I bought... Oh, it might be in that bag. Uh, maybe. What else? So, I thought it would be really cute to do this out of um, Hugh Loco's Backyard Chicken collection. So, it's a fingering weight collection, and it comes with two minis. So, what I'm thinking is doing the body out of the main skein, Doing my stripes out of one of the minis. Doing the comb and the waddle. Waddle, that's what it's called. Thank out you. of the other one. And then I just need to decide what to do about the nose. I might just use some scrap fingering for the for the beak, rather. So I think I might do a fingering weight one for that. I think it would be really funny. I think so. And I, I think, think it would be, be cute. Too. Yeah, but yes, definitely. You will I, see I cannot more of recommend. These. Yeah, and I can't recommend this enough. It, you think like maybe I don't need an emotional support chicken? You absolutely, you absolutely do. do need an emotional support chicken. So, you also have plenty of yarn left over. This is the my leftover for the main oh, yeah. color. I don't know. I know I have the black somewhere, and it comes with plenty of the red and the yellow. It comes with a sticker mm -hmm. from Knitting Tree LA. It comes with a stitch marker. That's a chicken. Comes with some extra stitch markers, which I didn't find really kind of the need to do. And it comes with a darning needle. So you really get everything except your main knitting needles yeah. and your um, your polyfill or whatever type of fill you want to use for it this is what i have left this is my main color so you can see how it was uh variegated uh how, it's, how it was dyed kind of like color blocking almost and then this is my secondary color so i still have a good amount left as well yeah my, except you seem to have i have more of my secondary this color. isn't my secondary oh. color i don't oh, know where gotcha. it is it's oh that's okay. somewhere no 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 worries. um but yeah so highly recommend yeah go buy really an emotional fun. support chicken and that i thought it was priced reasonably well you get 
I think it was thirty-eight dollars. Yeah. And you get two hundred grams of the worsted weight yarn. I don't know how much of the second yarn, but yeah, yeah. So go buy. So like it. this is where you kind of how it's like knit flat. You see that, and you fold it together, and then pick up the beak. It's really, really a clever, um, yeah, clever pattern. Highly recommend. <clears throat> yeah, and then also with the kit, you get a paper pattern included as well as access to the digital pattern. All right. So All that... right. Did so I... let me go on my next one because this one is also a little, um, a little ki like kit, which was great. And I, I got this at Skein when we went up there um, and I couldn't wait to cast it on and do it now that I'm kind of obsessed with this. Let me just make sure that I can pull the pictures up. Oh, you know what, guys? So if you're new here, welcome, first off. Oh, yeah. But we have a bird. We have a parakeet. His name is Skylar. And Skylar now talks. He said his first words. He did. He says, what you doing? Yeah. And I heard him downstairs now. It sounds like he's trying to say hello. Yes. I think. Yeah. I think he's kind um, of working He is that. just adorable, number one. And he's into everything. He lives the majority of his life outside of his cage. He's fully flighted, so he flies around. He stays in the living room, which is where we keep him. We have an open floor plan. Um, so he has access to, you know, wherever he goes. But he likes to stay at with, with us. He lands on our shoulders. He hangs out. He, like... Lands just, on the iPad, on the iPhone. Yeah. He eats your needle and stitch markers. Well, he just... He just... Yeah. You know, he likes to, he likes to help with that. All right, so um, you might be hearing him because he's just it sounds like he's um, he's whistling. We did close the cage obviously while we were up here. I don't think we'll ever get to the point where he'll be upstairs with us because um, this is a new environment for him. We usually kind of lock close all the doors when he's out. But anywho, maybe when we do a live from our living room one day. Um, while we were at Skein the Yarn Shop. Um, which is where I got my original uh, Woobles kits from. If you all remember, there were those little um, crochet like animals. Uh, they all have a name. They all have a personality. It's a beginner crochet kit. And um, I had some trouble the first time I did one, but I swore it was not user error, um, and I ate my words. It was user error. I was able to complete that one. You've seen the completed ones um, already. And if you haven't, you can check a couple of episodes prior. I think the last episode I showed them all, all of my completed ones. And so while we were there, I saw a new one, uh, new to me, in a really special packaging. Um, and I thought it would be absolutely perfect because what we decided, what I decided to do was um, our one of our niece, both of our nieces, who are eight years old, um, one of them, her mother is also a crafter. She crochets. And the other one, um, when we, she, she is so knit worthy. She loves getting knitted things from us. She thinks it's really, um, exciting to like make your own stuff. And she seems interested in learning how to, how to craft. So I thought it would be great to give them each a completed wooble as well as a kit. So, um, for their, for their birthdays. So, um, I saw this one. This is called Billy the Unicorn. I apologize for the um, the label on there. I didn't. I don't know why it's. Well, you'll see in a second. So this is Billy the Unicorn. Um, it came in a really fun, like rainbowy Iridescent. foil packaging, um, and it comes with everything is included. The yarn. There's step by step video instructions. Um, you can also download a PDF pattern. Um, there's a pre-started piece, which is really great. It's a lot of times with amigurumi for crochet. You um, need to do like a magic ring. Or at least I usually do a magic ring. And for some people, especially um, new crocheters, that could be kind of difficult. So there's a pre-started piece already um, crocheted into a magic ring. So you can start immediately without having to, to cast on or anything. It comes with a crochet hook, which is actually a really good quality crochet hook. All of the stuffing, plastic eyes, as well as um, a darning needle and embroidery floss. Not floss, but the, the dark yarn. So you can use either the safety eyes or the embroidered eye, the um, the black yarn for embroidered eyes. So super fun. The kits are $30, which is a little bit on the pricier side, I personally think. Um, but they're very cute. And I think... Um, 
to teach somebody how to crochet, especially with all of the step-by-step -step videos, which are excellent, um, it could very well be worth the price, um, you know, if you're willing to do something like that. There are a lot of other patterns and kits out there um, that are not as pricey, but I really enjoy the type of yarn that is included with this, which is a proprietary, proprietary yarn. Um, so you can only get that yarn through this kit, and it was really, really easy to work with. Okay, that being said, here is my version of Billy the Unicorn. I think he's really adorable. Um, he, I, I love the bangs. I don't know if you can see them. So the bangs I think are super cute and it was really fun. I've never um, crocheted anything like that. So you, you crochet this whole piece, this whole like hair piece that you, um, you end up seaming on, which I thought was really great. I think I overstuffed him a little bit. Um, but I love the pink horn. Um, yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it's cute, right? The eyes, I ended up um, embroidering the eyes instead. Um, Reese, we have a, a younger niece who puts everything in her mouth. So I didn't want to put the safety eyes there, which even though they're safety eyes, still not recommended for um, for small children because you could bite them off the plastic and stuff. Um, and then this is Skylar on top of Kevin's head. Yep. <laughs> Where we hang out. Um, so anyway, that's... Forget partridge uh, in a pear tree. Yeah. It's budgie and Brooklyn tweed. I know. Um, so I just want to share with you all, because I had mentioned my first one that I didn't have enough yarn left over, and I didn't have enough yarn to even complete the kit. I had plenty of yarn still left over. And you can see this yarn is like... Um, it's like a rope. It's kind of like a rope. It's got some spring to it. It's 100% cotton. Um, oh, is it really? I think so. It feels like it is. Maybe cotton polyester or something. I don't know, but it's really soft. It makes a great um, a great fabric. It's super cuddly. You yeah, the, get, this crochet. It's hook, a good crochet hook. It reminds me of your clover mm -hmm. crochet set. Yeah, it's very really really good quality. You also get a ton of stitch markers in here, and uh, like I said, a darning needle. Thanks. I just don't know what I'm going to be doing with all these crochet hooks. I know. I was just thinking that. Yeah. That so. might that would be a really good like maybe I'll option. donate them. Yeah, it's bring them to. Um, I'll bring them to our knit night. Yeah, yeah, good, good idea. job. Okay, I'm All glad right. we had that conversation. Thank yes, you very me much. too. So that was Billy the Unicorn. I loved it. It took me, you know, it takes you a few hours. Do you want to go next? You want me to go? Yeah, next? I'll go next. So next up, I love this. I'm so jelly. Is I was looking. For some, you know, I was just browsing Ravelry. I had, I don't even know how I found this, to be honest with you, but I found this pattern and I actually had the yarn that it called for. Thanks, Yarn Pantry. Um, <laughs> Way to use your stash. Right? So this is called the Harris Hood by, you know what's actually very funny? Huh. Is, I feel like on Rabbit. It's hard to find the designer's name. If you're in a pattern. We have that. It, so it's, it's by Cheryl Maktari. Maybe. So here is the hood. It's DK weight. And one of the yarns that it had recommended was Isager... EcoSoft, mm -hmm. which I happened to pick up a couple months ago at another trip to Skeen. Well, this is this. Uh, we're not sponsored. <laughs> I know, right? So this yarn mm -hmm. is 56% alpaca and 44% organic cotton, 50 grams for 125 yards. I purchased it in a color that does not. That's a lie. Um, color E4S. So this is what's left of it. It's kind of like a blown in mm. type It's got of a yarn. really nice like halo around it or something. Yes, it's, it's the softest yarn I feel like I've ever felt. It's very fluffy, yeah. very floofy. Floofy. It was a very enjoyable knit. And here is... Kev, it's so... Right, so it's a really good so size. Good. And here it is. I... I love it. Love it. It's so soft. And then when you don't want it on, you just... And you got a cowl. And you, yeah. 
It's really, it's, it's, it's. And then if you're home and now you have some place to put your popcorn. Stop it. Right? <laughs> Just put it right <laughs> It's actually a good idea. I wonder if Skylar will sit in there like a little. <laughs> he probably pouch. would. So I, I really thoroughly enjoyed this. It is knit using a US seven, which is a four point five millimeter, and a US eight, which is definitely not a eight millimeter. <laughs> no. Let's fix my notes. It is a five millimeter. You start at the top here, you cast on a very small number of stitches, I want to say like 19, and you knit like a square or a rectangle. And then you pick up around it and you do shaping. Then, I don't know, and then you knit, you flat, then you join in the round, you do a bind off, some ribbing down here, bind off, then you pick up stitches, do your brim, which is a fold over brim. I will say with this particular yarn, it was a little bit hard to seam mm. because it's so fluffy, like picking up the stitches and seeing the stitches. Yeah. But other than that, I love this thing. Um, and I have a decent amount. It only of, took you a few days to do, I thought. Like, is it a week, maybe? A week? Yeah. Yeah, it took me um, six days to work on it. I brought it with us to Skein. Hmm. And I was working on it there. That's what I. That's why I cast on. I was looking for something easy, and then I realized this was not something to take. That right. was like mindless knitting, because of the picking up stitches and all the shaping and stuff. But, but well worth it, huh? It looks great, Kev. Yeah, I feel like yeah. this is one of the better hood patterns that I've seen as well. Yeah. So highly recommend. Um, I don't remember the price. Maybe about six bucks for the pattern. So it's again, great. do they have different sizes? I'm sorry, did you mention no, that? No, it's one size. One size. Okay. So really nice. It's an oversized hood, and the yarn was fantastic to work. It's with. super soft and like light and fluffy. Like you think it looks like it's heavy. It's not heavy. It's not. And Lori's making a sweater out of this yarn. Yeah, she was knitting on the sweater at the yep, Christmas I remember party. That. Yeah. So definitely check it out if you're in the market for a hood. It's a pretty quick knit, easy. And comfy. Rock and roll. Great job. Um, okay. My finished object, which is still a little damp, so I'm not going to put it on. Mm, I don't think I'll put it on. Maybe I will. <clears throat> so this is the... Oh, you know what? Here. I finished the uh, Faiston Shoulder Cozy by um carol schumann of berry meadow farms if you all remember when we went to connecticut sheep and wool no that's a lie fiber festival of new england um i found this amazing booth with all of these like and you you know i was in heaven because it was nothing but kits right and um really great and and patterns from the um uh, from sorry from carol um her husband helped it was very like you know putting the packaging together i love the packaging each one of the kits had something special different whatever so carol was wearing this sh um like shoulder cozy i wanted for myself i really wanted a poncho like i've been talking a lot about a poncho the colors to me stood out. I thought they were stunning. I love that they're um, alpaca, you know, local to them, and they're from their farm. Don't lie. No, do not. Don't say any of that. What? You just love that it was a kit. I love no, that it was a just, kit. No, you are. It was a kit. You are speaking false Listen, truths. I'm justifying myself. It doesn't matter. I don't need to justify myself. No, you don't. Just say you love a kit. I love a kit. There you go. Okay. So um, anyway, the pattern right now is not available on <laughs> Ravelry or their website. It's only part. It's only available as part of their kit. However, it will be available at some point separately. So down below um, in our show notes, I have the the kit, a link to the kit, um, listed down below there under my finished objects. And then there's also a link to just their website as well if you want to look at some of the other things. And then later on in the podcast, I'll show you. Um, they sent us some really great goodies and some goodies for you guys as well, which was so unnecessary, but so amazing. Okay, so without further ado, I do have some finishing to do with this. This is the one that 
is finished. I'm considering it finished, but I just have a couple of ends to weave in and then um, just like one little seam to go like that with. Okay, so I will show you what it is so you can see the colors. Yeah, this is still pretty damn. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is um, this is how it turned out. You have a really fun, and I'll, I will I will put it on so you guys can can kind of see how it falls. But it's I think I love the colors. I think they're so great. This is so soft. It's one hundred percent alpaca. The um, the yarn, each one of the the colors or the yarn comes from a specific alpaca or has a you know the a name for that alpaca, um, which I thought was really really amazing i do have uh some yarn left over which is great not much for each color like it was a it was really put together um very well so the dark yarn or my color is uh gideon 2 which is super cute and the um like tannish sandy color yarn would you call it like a sandy color yarn i would go tannish. more tan caramelly type okay um, is Excalibur, which is a great name for an alpaca. It is. Hi, this is Excalibur. Do you know somebody had left a comment? They had a budgie, and the budgie's name was Icarus, which is oh, such a good name. great name. name. Right? Yeah, we'll get a second one. Um, the, I love your face there. The This one is uh, Mosey. So with the kits, you had two different options. You can have one with the brown color here, and then the other one I think was a gray. Yeah, because this is gray in the pattern. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and then so you have your you have this gray um, option. Yeah, I don't know where the label. Oh, here it is. And then this one is called Abby. Hi, this, Abby. Hi, Abby. I will say the. Uh, it was such a pleasure, and this is how the kit originally came. It comes in this really cool, like um, insulated bag, which I think is super clever. It's got their logo on it here. Um, it's got some pockets with some Velcro. It definitely is a lot of space, and I think what's really fun is that you can throw some ice in here, and this can be like a little mini, this is a mini like cooler, cooler. right? Yeah. They have since changed the packaging um, of this kit, so it comes in a really nice tote bag now, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but again, the faced in shoulder cozy, not available as a standalone pattern just yet, but it will be soon. It is available, and you get a uh, printed copy of the pattern um, when you when you buy the kit. So, let's see if I can put this on. Okay. Um, the the kit or the pattern is knit um, in three different pieces. All three pieces are knit the exact same, and um, they um, and then they're all seamed together. So I'm like again, I'm not the best seamer. But I think I did a pretty good job. The uh, I'm sorry. The pieces are actually a, a three needle bind off. All right. So this is how it is. It's just like a shoulder. It's just a little shoulder cozy. Can you just put that back in down in the back a little bit? Thanks. Thanks. So um, I just have to, to put this together here, and then just like weave in some ends, still. But I think it's really cute. Like it just kind of keeps your your shoulders warm. Your shoulders warm. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me. I think it looks good. <laughs> Stand you. I think it's so fun. So um, if you're interested, we'll show you a couple of... Um, <laughs> they have a ton of kits for a lot of different patterns. Some of them are crocheted. Some of them are knit. I have a kit here that I um, am going to get ready to start soon. I did try to start already, but I grabbed the wrong hook. This is a crochet co hook um, kit. And this is how some how some of their kits are too. They come in these little canisters. So this is uh, hand toasties. I blame it on Olivia. Olivia it is Olivia's fault. It for is sure. Olivia's fault. Olivia showed you this kit when we had lunch. Yeah. And then we went straight. Like we finished our food and went straight to this booth because Olivia had a kit. Yeah. So um, this is super. It's super warm. It's super cozy. Just a. This is a nice little shoulder cozy. Yeah. It looked, mm -hmm. I mean, I think if it was a project that you focused on just straight, you like you were monogamous, it would probably be a pretty quick knit. Oh, it's too. super quick. It's all garter. It's all garter. You do a certain number of stripes and then add this. I ended up, so for this section here, I ended up cutting the yarn um, instead of carrying it up because you carry it up quite a bit. On the other sections, I just carried it up 
And there's you don't even see where I carried yeah. it because you're uh, when you're doing the three needle bind off, you're picking up these stitches mm-hmm. between the two the two different sections, um, knitting a row, and then you know doing a three needle bind off. So all the ends are buried like right underneath there. And I'll show you the the inside too if you really want to see. But um, and then for here you it so then you you three needle bind it, bind off. It's a one gigantic rectangle yeah and then you pick up on each end you knit a certain number of rows you bring them together um and then uh, along the long edge you seam up like you know however many inches she says and you've got like a nice little um border here so again i think with the you it's hard to tell from a distance but i seam this on the wrong side which seems to be my mo lately um so it pops out here but here it's nice and uh, it's nice and and even. So um, when you're seaming things together, because I couldn't do I couldn't do a mattress stitch here because of the way that the um, the ends were like it didn't it, it wasn't stockinette. Right, your stitches weren't going this way. Right, they were going this way. Yeah. So so I couldn't get underneath the you know underneath and pick up that stitch. So um i just did a regular like i just kind of seamed them together as best as i could in the same spots so that they would be even but i did it on the wrong side of the the right side of the fabric which is the wrong side of the seam right so the, the seam now is puckering a little bit here um it's super flat and lovely on the back end so i know i was doing the right thing like the right technique in seaming um i just did it on the wrong side one thing yeah it's all right and one yeah. thing we had talked about last night when you were doing it we Look toyed with the idea of him possibly picking up the stitches yeah, maybe doing on both and doing another, another three-needle bind-off. So that might be another way around something like that to do that instead yeah. and seam it that way. And to make sure your seam was on the inside, you would three-needle bind-off with the right sides facing, facing each other. Facing each other. Um, Carol did send us an email um, about the pattern and said that when it does come out she's currently right now working on an actual video on how to seam everything together and how to put it all together nice so i'm sure she'll you know mention that uh or you know have her technique there because hers obviously looks flawless um but i love it i think it's it's really fun i think it's kind of unique um i love the colors and it's it's this is a little wet but it's gonna be super warm yeah when it's done very nice thanks okay i'm gonna put my ranger back ranger back on all right so my last finish object. Oh, and this was knit on a US, I believe it's a US 7. Because it's a worsted weight. Sorry, uh, US 6, four millimeter, four, mil- four millimeter needles. So my Carry on. last finish project is called the Ret Hat. It is by Megan Babin in Hudson and West. So good. Um, I did use, um, it was living in my, I was going to say hide and hammer. No. This is matter root bag. Um, I did use Hudson and West yarn that we bought at Vogue Knitting Live last February, actually. I, it is a f- cabled hat. I used their, cu- their yarn or base called Forge. And Forge is 70% U.S. Merino and 30% U.S. Coradale. Yeah. It is... It's such a great... Great yarn. Um, 235 yards for three and a half ounces. So 100 grams. And this colorway is called Mallard. And here is the cabled hat. It's so good. This was super quick and easy. Yeah. Honestly, I... Is it a written and a chart, or is it just a chart? It is charted. Okay. It is not... The cable is not written. Mm -hmm. The cable is a chart. Um, So I followed the chart. It was... I will say... Not that it was hard. Oh, your chart looks great. Mine's a little complicated. So I... Um... I'm trying to see what size did I knit? Is there multiple sizes? I think it's one size. I think it's one size too. I think their cable hats are usually one size because cable cables are very stretchy too. Yeah, like you can you can All definitely right. accommodate so, head sizes. It took me two days to knit. 
So it was a quick knit. Yeah. It is knit on a US 4, a US 5, and a US 7. So that's a 3.5 millimeter, a 3.75 millimeter, and a 4.5 millimeter. So if I remember correctly, the 4.5 is used for your cast on. It is a tubular cast on. But this one was different than any other that I've done. Mm. So I've done the one where... So I've done Andrea Mowry's yep. video. Yep. It's not like hers, but that's one video that I watch, which is um, like, you know, it's really weird and it gets very twisty, the stitches when you do that. Then I've done the one from Brooklyn Tweed, Jared, Jared Flood's Italian tubular cast on. And this one had one where you do yarn overs. Yes. So it was different. I like that one too. So they that do... was a lot easier to like manage. Yes, absolutely. I thought for sure. So this one does have you cast on with the smaller needle for the tubular cast on, and I want to say you work the setup rows in that. Mm -hmm. Then you switch to the next size up to work your uh, ribbing. And the setup rows, just to back up, the setup rows are. I think the same way that you would do a setup row from like a, another traditional method of casting on. Yeah. Like that tubular cast on. Um, and then, then you switch to your larger needles for the actual cables. So really enjoyed the pattern. A couple interesting things that I saw in it is that it recommends when you block it to block it folded. Oh, I didn't see so that. So that really. you get you get the nice seam here for the brim. So I thought that oh. was actually quite smart. I haven't yeah. seen that before. And then something I did, which I've never thought about doing before, is when I wove mm. in my cast on edge, you know, I typically weave it in on the inside, but because this had a folded up brim, I wove in on the outside. Because right. then that becomes the inside. When I fold it up, smart. You don't see that little ridge, not that I, you know, I care on any of my other hats, but I had never thought to do that before. And I did that with this one. Um, mm. The yarn's beautiful to work with. It is quite... It really is. It's like, round. It's like a nice round... Yeah, which you need for yarn. cables. Mm -hmm. And it is pretty substantial. Um, it is... There was something else I was just going to say. Oh, what's nice, too, is that it is that type of base where if you're comfortable enough, you don't need a cable needle because you're not working with a lot of stitches. So you don't really have to worry about your um, your stitches falling off your needle. But yeah, so this is my ret hat. There is another hat or plenty more that I would like to knit. She does... Um, She's a fantastic designer. Fantastic designer. And I love her. I was just looking at her stuff today when I was like linking the things down below. Remember when we Stop. I we was went so to the booth, Kevin. Oh and my god. We were talking to like <laughs> one of the <laughs> workers at the Hudson and West booth. And Ray was chatting with her and it ended up I don't even know what you said. I was like, Oh, I just started this I wanna start this hat. It's lovely. The designer is Megan blah 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 blah. Megan Babin. She's like, mm hmm that's me. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. It was <laughs> so really embarrassing. Funny. It was actually quite funny. And I have a you know, a little bit of yarn left. So it'd be really cool if they were at Vogue because I would get some more yarn. Because they actually didn't have the color that I wanted. This was my second choice. So I would love to, um, yeah, I really, really one day, one day that sweater. I want to do that sweater. It's Sven. Sven. No, Sven. Um, I want to say that's with me. their yarn. I know it is all over cabled. It, it it's I'll just see if I could find it. stunning. She had that. They had it as a sample there. Yeah. Um, in a men's size. And she asked if I wanted to try it on. I said no, because I knew <laughs> That if I put it on, I that would be the end of it, and I'd be like five hundred dollars in the hole on this sweater because it's you know it's, it's, it's pricey. It's pricier yarn. Yeah, I think it is over like thirty dollars a skein or something. Say seven. seven. This is the one that Ray's speaking of. 
it's oh, a gorgeous so good gorgeous it's sweater. Stun- look at the front of it I, I think it's just absolutely stunning yeah and they have some non one day listen if anybody wants to buy me a birthday gift <laughs> a sweater's quantity of their yard so to do that sweater yeah they she just has a lot of great yeah great patterns really really um great designer she was a lovely to meet as well um her models are are gorgeous <laughs> also um so fun times i think are those all of our finished objects what are these no because that has a zipper that's enough this is very Oh, that's fun. Stop. Check check them out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was my last finished object. Okay. I don't have any more finished objects either. Okay. So let's move on to some whips. Whoops. I have... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How come you're taking those out of your binder? Because I moved them into the back. Remember oh, I told yeah, you I yeah. separated my finished items. So now they go into the back because they are complete. Um, this year, we don't we don't ever we don't really do um, New Year's resolutions. The last one that we did for last year was about um, bringing a new yarn to this house, and we had some stipulations as to where we you know when we can do that. We stuck with that for there the are, most part. There are a lot of people who watch our podcast who comment who are who call us out every single time we don't do that. So I think we I think we've not stuck with that more times than we realize. No, because we went to events. Well, you know what the problem was? The problem was that we went to an event like every friggin' other Month. week. Yeah. <laughs> Last so. year. Last year was a little overwhelming. We're not gonna be doing that much this no. this time around. All right. So um anyway, my point is um I am again starting gonna start to update Ravelry. That's my plan. Not my not my um Resolution. Resolution, but my plan is to um, update Ravelry more frequently, which I did two years ago, and it worked out really well for me. Because I still want to go back and be like, oh, what did I use here? When did I do that? Yeah. And it only worked because I was using my knitted journal, like Kevin's using, you know, his, and we both have, you know, we both have them now. Um, so, yeah. Anywho, that I don't know why I got off on a tangent there. So, okay. yes, I have three whips. I do, too. Okay. Do you want to go? I have four. Oh, then you go, for sure. I didn't realize I had four. All right, well, let's... You know what? Let's stick to this. Um, to this. So, I am also doing a cabled hat pattern from Hudson and West. Um, and Megan Babin. Megan Babin. It is the um, Oshin hat... I you, started this hat. Sorry doing? to interrupt. Do you not have folders? I do have folders. Oh, okay. That's why I was confused because see, like I do. Um, and this is Oshin. I started this. I cast this on uh, last year, I think, sometime using yarn that I had gotten at Rhinebeck. For some reason, at that time, the yarn and the pattern just didn't work together for me, so I ended up frogging it. And. Um, so I'm starting it again. I, I, I'm, I, I bought this yarn specifically for this hat pattern last year at Vogue. One of our other plans is to start grabbing our pre-made bags because we like when we we've bought some yarn, assigned patterns to them and put them in bags. Like well, you did. I did. For you know, so I have probably about 15 bags or so <laughs> with yarn and. Pr- and, and uh, intended projects. So my plan is to um, at least have one project from one of those bags at all times. So I went, I randomly just grabbed a bag. I said, I'm going to go with this one. And it was the uh, Oshin hat um, by Megan Babin. It is a cabled hat um, similar to what Kevin has going on. The cables are a little bit wider and there's a couple of different types of them in here. Um, I This all charted for the cable um because of is that your chart or you said you had two charts i moved the the chart key oh okay so what i do um i'm not going to show most of this because um you know it's charted but i use good notes i hi- and i'm not going to zoom in guys i'm sorry 
I highlighted each individual type of cable um, and I copied the chart key. And so now that my chart key can move around um, as I need it. That's so, what I did too. Yeah. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six different cables in here. And then uh, one, two, three, four different decreases. So it's a lot going on. Um, but being organized this way has really helped me out um, stay on top of the pattern. So just if you use um, good notes, I've tried, you know, I've tr I've tried Knit Companion. I still can't get my head around it. I, I really did try um, again. I just find that this um, good notes really works yeah. for me. And we have Same. that link down below our good notes app. We're just I'm used to it, and I actually in not just knitting patterns. I keep like insurance information on there and everything. It's a great one. one yeah, thing. I know we have to decide whether or not to upgrade to Good Notes six. I already did. Oh, I have Good Notes five. Yeah, we both have five, but they released six because they they're not going to be doing like I don't remember a oh, ton of a... support for five. Okay, I don't know, but now six is like a paid for subscriptiony type of thing, which I d dislike. Doing. Oh, I dislike that as well because we spent. For good notes, it was a one-time fee of like right. five dollars or something. So this is so this is the um, this is how I do my my bags. So I have a bag, um, and then I write the and I put the skein of yarn and I write the name of the pattern and put it all in here. So I know like oh what was in there, and so that's how I knew. I grabbed this bag and I found the yarn and the pattern. I'm also using um, Hudson and West Forge is the base. Like Kevin said, seventy percent merino, thirty percent Coriadale. It's worse to wait. Um, this is this is the smoke colorway, which is their Rhinebeck 2022 colorway, I guess. Um, you didn't buy that at Rhinebeck, though, right? No, I bought it at Vogue. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I bought it at Vogue. I don't know. I'm pretty confident you did, too. I don't know. So this is what I have so far. Um, I did make some. I did make quite a bit of progress on it. So uh, same thing with what Kevin said. Um, it's uh, five inches of, of the two by two ribbing. It is the uh, tubular cast on that's recommended in the pattern with the yarn overs. I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, it does create such a nice like finished edge when you have it when you have it folded up, or even if you don't. You know, I if you don't like a folded brim, you don't necessarily have to. You just do the just do the. Um, just do the ribbing, you know, halfway. Yeah, and, just do like two and you and don't have inches. to fold it on, like fo you know, fold it up at all. Or if you like something a little bit more slouchy, you can certainly shorten this up and and all of that. So um, here are, you know, this is these are the cables. Um, so again, it's you know similar to like what Kevin has going on. Some of these cables you have to be careful because there's like pearls um, in some of them and uh, all of that. I'm cabling without the cable needle. I did. I'm proud of myself because I made a mistake, like rows down, and I was very close to saying I'm gonna leave it, and I didn't. So I know I took it all back. I dropped the stitches. I've corrected it. I'm feeling much more comfortable in correcting, um, correcting cabled stitches. For some reason, it didn't make sense to me at at one time, but now it sure it it makes sense. Um, I have all of the little sections separated by stitch markers here. I'm using really fun um, needle stoppers. These are cute. They're like Christmas gnomes. Um, and those... Uh, nah. Fox and Pine? Fox and Pine. Sorry. We'll have a, we have that link down below as well. Super cute. So yes. um, again, I, I love the, the colors totally for me. I'm about halfway done, I think, with the... Um, with the cable pattern or with the hat maybe okay. totally i'm just really excited about it it's it's all clicking and I've, it's a lot farther than i've gotten the first time i did it and it was the same size needles four five same seven. size needles yep yeah, this is um or four five eight yeah four, uh, or is it five i'm sure it's i'm sure it's the same um let's see let's see <clears throat> Needles, size A for the body of the hat is a US 7. Size B for the ribbing of a hat is a US 5. Size C for the cast on is a US 6. Nice. Like you said. Okay. Yep, exactly like you said. So, super fun. Love it. I can't nice wait for job. it to be done. Thanks. Wait, when I have a lot of projects, um, I feel like I didn't get a chance to do, to finish a lot of things 
you know, in a month. But when you see one of the projects that I've knit on and the miles of knitting that are on the gosh darn projects, I think it'll all make sense to you. And who cares? I'm in charge of my own knitting, right? Absolutely. Right. All right, so. Oshin. It's spelled O-I-S-I-N, but um, it's pronounced Oshin. So next up, this is going to be a very... I've showed this. This is going to be on the needles for quite some time. Um, I made actually quite you did a decent amount of progress on this from the last episode. Yeah. So this is my jelly roll blanket by um, Kay Jones uh, from the Bakery Bears channel. It is a blanket. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following the pattern. I know, I'm like, oh, what are you trying to say? So here's where I was last time. So I have this yarn, which I have no idea. This could be mine, actually. I feel like this is Frozen Grasshopper. I, it might be. It looks like it. This is, I think, Trilogy Yarns. This is Amanda Knits. Mm -hmm. Fox Farts? Yeah. This is mine. This is Rhubarb. This is... doesn't it looks familiar this is lolo did it oh i wouldn't have thought that actually and this is le garçon i love it so i'm going to knit this at about i think six feet so I'm, or i might just finish this little nugget um i the only thing i did differently is i'm slipping i think i'm slipping my stitches on both ends just mm -hmm. to make it easier to pick up stitches when i start and a lot of you second. had some suggestions regarding this blanket too, which is really great. A lot of people. Have I know a lot of people are doing a DK one. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing fingering. Like I probably we would use so up more mm -hmm. yarn and it would knit quicker, but I do like it. It's such a relaxing knit um, because it's just garter. I think it's 20 something stitches, maybe 23. Let's see. Two, four, six, eight, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20 stitches. So you can make a lot of progress pretty quickly when you're working with a mini. Um, yeah, and I'm just changing colors whenever I want. Most of them, I think the only one, this one I did not use the full skein. This full, but I like this it one I didn't up like either. that. Like that they're different lengths, you know? It's cute. Yes, I want it to be different yeah. lengths because I don't want it to be like so blocky when right. it's done. But it's just a nice little mindless thing to do. I knit on it a ton when I was sick because I didn't have the mental capacity to focus on other things. So when I just wanted to, when I had the energy to knit, mm -hmm. really, I would grab this and just start working on it. So it is knit on a 2.75 millimeter needle, which I think with this, that's like a what, a th two or a three? What yeah. does it say that again? 2.75 millimeter is like it's a US a two or three. Yeah. Um, and I'm using some wood double pointed needles from Knitter's Pride, my symphonies. And that is, and I have it right now too. I just have it living in a fringe supply co bag. And I have, this is how we keep our minis in little bags with the yeah. tags. So I'm just randomly grabbing stuff. Like here's, this is from a Stephen Westall, but I have so much of it that I would probably break this up. So yeah, so I'm just kind of, whatever I grab is what I grab and that's what's being used. And then whenever I'm tired of knitting with it, if it's not done, I cut it, throw it back in here and move on. I love that. Okay, Great. you're up. Okay, um, my next project is kind of like a, hey, I'm, I'm making you up kind of project. This is also living in a Matterroot bag. Hey, I'm making you up type of project? Yeah, I'm making it up. I'm Do using. I... I'm getting some inspiration from different patterns. Oh, I'm like. Um, so I was also looking for a simple project to bring with us to skiing, because you know socializing, and um, <clears throat> we had a skein of yarn for from Kevin. This is uh, fancy flannel. It is uh, fingering weight. It's super cute. 
Um, I love the colors. It's based off of one of Kevin's flannel shirts. Well, that's where the name came from. I dyed that. I know. And then I didn't realize it looked like one of my flannels. Right. Um, which was so fun. So, um, again, I told you told you that our my favorite um, hat is the Sockhead Slouch. One of our favorite hats is the um, Lyle Cap as well. Lyle Cap is a DK weight pattern. It's a very simple, really small brim, um, kind of slouchy-ish hat that you wear like up um so i kind of wanted to to do a fingering weight version of the lyle cap but with um with some of like the numbers from the sock head slouch and some of the techniques there so i uh that's what i did so i started just a very simple um just a very simple stockinette hat the i cast on 138 stitches i believe um hold please and i did like an inch and a half of two by two ribbing and then i'm just i'm just going i don't know where it is to be honest with you modified sock head is what i called it for you know for that i love the colors this is knitting up so pretty Thanks. Yeah, you did a good job. So Thanks. I'm using uh, 3.25 millimeter needles, which is a US-3. Um, I cast on 136 stitches with the German Twisted Cast On. I did a 2x2 two two ribbing for 1.5 inches. And then I'm just going to I'm just gonna knit till about 7 inches or so. Um, I'm going to use the math from the, uh, the sock head decreases, I believe. But the measurements of the lyle cap um you know for for length and stuff because i think that that's a really great length yeah and um this is a 75 25 mm -hmm. base um so 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon and i think we're going to probably use this as a sample um when we start maybe doing some trunk shows and things like that so we'll be looking maybe for some sample knitters in the future just throwing the idea out there but I think it's really, really pretty. Yeah, so. I like. I actually, I really enjoy and it's, dyeing that colorway. I yeah, don't have any of it now. I don't fun. think it's on my list yep. for this upcoming and then week. These but I thought were really cute. They Knitting are. sheeps. Every one of my projects probably has a thing on it. So yeah, I just it's one of those projects again, like Kevin said, where you just need that mindless that mindless knit. Although I'm getting to a point where I can probably start considering some decreases after a little bit more time. So, Very nice. Yeah. All right. Easy peasy. So next up for me is I made some progress on my core vest, mm. which is a Brooklyn tweed pattern by Jared Flood. Um, I am knitting the second size based on my gauge because my gauge was, I was getting more stitches. Yes, I was getting more stitches per inch. So I had to go down a size in the sweater. Um, I am knitting this out of Wool Dreamers Moda, and it is living in this fantastic bag. It's that so fantastic. was given to us at um, Knit City Montreal by Caroline. Uh -huh. Real men wear florals. I should bring this to Vogue, to Vogue this totally. year. Maybe I'll run into that woman. You should. So, we should make out right in front of her. This is Moda. It is 230. 52 yards for 100 grams. Um, it is DK. I will say it's a heavier DK. Mm -hmm. I think it, I find it hard to get gauge with this yarn for some reason. I think because it is a it, yeah. it runs heavier. It is an eight ply yarn, so it's it's very round. It's very dense. Um, it's lovely. But it's absolutely lovely. The fabric that it makes. And we saw them at Vogue last year. Yeah. That's where I think the first time we saw them. Yeah, and we and also saw them at... Um, Rhinebeck this year? Um, Wool and Folk. Yes, this year. Uh, and that's where I bought this yarn. Yeah. So here is where I'm at. I believe I'm at the point where I can separate for sleeves. Yay, nice. And this is where I was last time you guys saw it. Last time I showed it. Yeah, you put a lot it. of so progress on that. So I definitely made a good amount of progress on this. I will... Um, maybe I'll work on it. That's a lie. I'm not working on it this weekend. But yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. This is knit on a US 6 in a US 4. It has an Italian tubular cast on. 
You do two inches. I did two inches of ribbing. It does give you the ability to make that choice. I believe it recommends anywhere from two to five mm. inches of ribbing, depending on what you want to do. I did not feel like doing um, five inches five ribbing. inches of ribbing on a sweater. One by so, one ribbing? Yeah, one by one ribbing. Um, Is so it yeah, twisted? So, no, no. Um, let's see what else. So I said US 6, which is a 4 millimeter, and a US 4, which is 3.5. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I really don't have much to say. It's stock net. Yeah. It's the yarn, like I said, it, because it's so dense and it's very thick, I probably should be using maybe like a long, longer cord or something because it is a little hard to move along the cord and the needles. So I think that slows me down just a little bit yeah. with this. Um, but yeah, so core vest. Nice. Oh, excuse me. I'm drinking hot chocolate instead of coffee. It doesn't have the same effect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I... Um, I was I stayed up to speed on the Woolens and Nosh Advent 2023. Um, I knit a color a day, which was great. I did my socks two at a time. I did not complete them, so no spo like, you know spoiler alert. Did not complete them. This is, I'm using the Peace and Joy sock pattern that all, that came with the the uh, the skein, and it is designed by Kristen Drucker. I have not seen a finished. I don't think I've seen a finished. Um, socks yet with the um with the pattern but i have made some progress um i like i said i'm doing them in tandem um but i did finish all of the colors and obviously you know the advent season is now over so i don't have to say spoiler alert or anything but i love absolutely love um michelle i I love her her colors. I love how she does her stripes. This is um, a 24 stripe. Goes all the way to here. So from here up he to here are the 24 stripes. Um, it's a really nice fade. This was, I believe, like dark and light or dark. I forgot the name of her. Um, of, of like what what her um what her inspiration was but i think it was like dark and light or something like that is it in the kit yeah it talks about the yarn i saved mine too i just don't know where i actually put it so it's a very simple um pattern you have um some increases and decreases along uh two sides there i did get to the point where um I am ready, so I'm going to be putting... I'm going to do an afterthought heel. The pattern tells you you can do any heel that you want. Um, I just wasn't... I had gotten to the heel before I finished... Um, I was very close to finishing the whole all of the colors. So I didn't want to be in the middle of knitting a heel flap and gusset. And like having to stop because I knew like I wanted to wait for the next color to come out. And I just wasn't... I wasn't in the mind space to like be able to do that because I haven't done a lot of heel flapping gussets. So um, I'm going to do an afterthought heel. I put in where I'm going to be putting the heel. Um, it does come with a mini that is this color here. So I think that'll look nice as an afterthought yeah. heel there. And then the toe, I probably will be doing um, the toe in the stripes just so I have enough yarn. Yeah. I have a really cute uh, gingerbread man and some jingle bell stitch markers. So... Um, I will be finishing this soon. I um, So you can see that I have been doing them um, in tandem. So I am I did a couple more stripes of on this sock. I'll do a couple more stripes on this sock. I actually might just go to the to the toe on this sock and then pick that back up and, and do it again. But look how fun. Uh, yeah, right? it's very nice. Yeah. So, and she does say that it is inspired by the theme this year is light and dark. Light inspired and dark. in part by the solstice and the annual cycle of slowing down. Yeah. So I love that. Um, I will say... For the for the next my next advent, 
um, socks from Will and Zanash because I will be getting them again. It I absolutely love it. I'm gonna go. I I want to go back to like vanilla socks. Just my preference. Um, I like wearing the pattern socks, um, but I enjoy just knitting small circumference in the round over and over and over again. It's just it does it for me. So, you know, I know what I like, and I'm just going to – it's Stockinet City for me. Stockinet socks all the way, all the time. So speaking of Wool and Zanash, oh, one you. really regret. Yes, that I have a huge have regret. Because Same. I was sick and I was sleeping, we missed the collab between Le Garçon and – And I didn't look for Wool it because Zanash. I was going to work, and Kevin's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i do it, you know, at noon when they launch – and I so slept. I didn't look at it at work because I just expect expected it to be done. Yeah, stupid COVID. It's okay. Kevin slept on the couch that night. I'm just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. I actually slept. Well, I was saying to Ray, like the weird thing with COVID is I'm not a napper. I don't nap. I it's not something I can really do. I only do that when I am sick. And I went upstairs and got into bed and slept for like an hour and a half or something like that. And I woke up. And I went to go buy it, and they were sold out already. So, we were really congratulations to, to all of you who were able to <clears throat> get uh, the collab. All right, my last huge whip FOMO. is so this one. I don't know actually if I've made any obvious progress since the last time I showed it, but I want to show it because I did something with it that I thought was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So this is my Geo Gradient Shawl. It is the MCAL from Stephen West for 2023. I have this living in my Magner bag that we got at Brooklyn General when we were there. It's a good bag, too. It, it really is. So I'm knitting it in all of... I got to remember to put that in the show notes. I think I forgot. Yarn that I dyed. And I don't know... Again, I don't know where I was. I'm still on section one, but... This is knit in Ghost. Wedding Mints. New Growth. And Shady Pines. I love Shady Pines. What a great... All of these together look amazing. You did such a great job. Thanks. <clears throat> so, I am using a modification to... I modified the modification to Section 1. Um, I forget the woman's name. So here's my middle square. And I'm Ooh, now... You lost stitches. Be careful. That's fine. Now I'm back to doing my stripes. And you can actually see here how... <gasps> you just lost some stitches. I lost one stitch. Do um, you want... Where, where are... We my needle stops and pines? They're downstairs. And I actually... I should have grabbed them. I totally forgot. I found a set in my car the other day. I think it, you left They're them. probably for me. Um, all right. So I ripped this whole section out, these four colors here. I was off some stitches. I didn't like the way something else looked. So I was thinking back and I said, I'm done with this. I'm just going to go all the way back. I'm just going to take it all out and start over. Wound up the yarn, blah, blah, blah. I go to knit this section and I get to the end and I don't have enough yarn. Probably short by like 10 stitches. Now, I know what you guys are saying <laughs> that when you undo yarn like that, it's, it looks like ramen noodles, right? right? It's all kinky and a lot of people recommend skinning it up, soaking it and letting it dry. I didn't have time for that in my life. So what mm -hmm. I did is I kind of did a semi skein, just wrapped it around from my wrist to my elbow and I brought it upstairs and I turned on our steamer and I steamed the yarn to get out all the kinks. And then it was just ready to work with again immediately. And then I had enough yarn to finish the section. So if you... I think that's a great... Yeah, I, I don't know why I thought yeah. of doing that, but it worked tremendously well. Um, and honestly, actually, you know what? For that color, I only took out two rows and I just came upstairs and steamed the yarn that i took out um and you can immediately tell the difference you can even see the difference in my rows that the last row looks really nice and the rest of them are a little janky looking mm. because of the crinkles so 
My plan mm-hmm. is to have this done for Vogue. Okay, don't set yourself up for... No, Vogue I'm... is in like three weeks. And I am almost done with Clue <clears throat> 1, so Clue okay. 2, 3, 4. I have confidence in sunshine. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh. So <coughs> this is knit on a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. And that is pretty much it for this one. And that's all my whips. Okay. I think you have some really great whips. You have some really great projects on the needles. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm happy with the projects. I like that um, kind of what I did that last month of the year type of, I would say, is I, again, I took all of my projects pretty much out of, and I put them in a plastic storage tote. And I've just been kind of grabbing one. And then that's kind of my main whip that I've been working on. And then I've been grabbing yarn for a new project. So I had something old, something new, and then I have my blanket. So that when I don't know what I want to knit, I have my blanket to go to. I think that's great. I love love that. All right. My last whip um, has really consumed a lot of my time. (laughs) This when Now, I'm going to preface this. By saying, um, this is, the size of this garment is astronomical. It is. However, it is uh, as requested. So, it is a lot of knitting. Um, This is, I picked back up the Ivan sweater, which I've been working on for about 14 years. (laughs) And um, I have made substantial progress. You have. On the one front panel. (laughs) That's when he he showed it to me last night. I was like, oh, you're knitting a table runner. Which I basically knit a table runner for our giant, um, our giant table. Okay. So um, this is the Ivan by Veronique Avery. It is a Brooklyn tweed pattern. Kevin has knit this before. And I should have brought mine up. Yeah. It's an oversized, um, really fun cardigan with some like cool sleeves fashion increases and decreases um it looks it looks simple but if you you know the closer you look the the, you know the more um you see in this pattern it is it is very um avant-garde i want to say it's got up to like 10 inches of more of positive ease um so it's a very um large cozy cozy pattern it's knit in pieces from the bottom up I've already completed the back of the sweater. So this is the overview of kind of the shape of the sweater um, here. So you can see it is quite oversized. There's like three quarter inch sleeves there. Um, they're they're uh, kind of pinched a little bit on the side. I forgot what the what they what they call those sleeves, uh, tulip sleeves. Um, here are here's the pattern on some models. So you can see with the different the different types of ease that you want on the on the model after kevin knit his for those of you who don't know the story after kevin knit his um my my parents both watch the podcast which i think is really adorable so hi mom and dad um my dad who never asked for anything had said to my mom oh i really want i I would love that i want that um so i was really excited because like again like i said he doesn't ever want or ask for anything so i made the decision to go ahead and um and knit him one. So I purchased the yarn from Knit Picks, started the project, and then I forgot. It just kind of got put on the back burner. Um, it is a it is um, set as a maximum difficulty level level pattern, but I think it's just because of the increases and decreases and how it's put together because it is seamed, which we all know how I am with seaming. Um, but just a reminder, I already have the back done. Um, and because it's so oversized, I think my row gauge was a little off. So it's a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be. It's the second to last size is what I'm knitting for my father, who's um, taller and broader than I am. So um, here is the here is the the back piece. Um, so it's a lot of fabric. Um, it's a very large. Um, it's going to be a very large sweater. So. This is how it looks on Kevin. Yes. So it is quite long, as you can see, because it goes down past my glutes. Yeah. 
it's a lot of positive ease. There's no um, buttons. The sleeves are what three quarter length, and mine have this little like tulip, tulip detail. Um, so super fun, but super you know super baggy, um, large like uh, positive ease. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I only say that to preface like. I don't line. need all the comments. I get it. It's huge. It is. But I checked with my mom. We talked about it. And this is going to be still very appropriate for my father. It's basically going to be like a giant bathrobe, which... It's comfy. It's comfy, right? And mine this is, is knit out of the same yarn. Yeah. Just different. Yeah. Second, the second color of mine okay. is different. So I was here the last time um, that I showed this. And this is the first of two front panels. And so this is where I am. Now, <laughs> it is for sure a table runner. Um, oh we can God. eat Christmas dinner off of this. So funny. But holy crap, this was a ton, a ton of knitting. Um, you have this um, applied detail as your, not applied, you have this um, embedded detail that as you're knitting this, this becomes the side it folds in on folds itself. Folds in on itself. In, so it like, creates a really cool like patterning here, but it, it makes it so it does fold in and it kind of like makes a little seam almost. It makes a double thick collar. Yeah. So you can tack Very it, clever. Yeah, you can tack it down or not. I decided not to tack mine and it, down. And it stays. Yeah, it's, um, it's yeah. fine. And then, so currently, where I'm, and then you have your, um, so that's a straight edge here with that, with that patterning. And then here you have your um, your sleeve shaping and decreases. Um, so that's built into that. I've been using stitch markers to keep track of how many times you're decreasing. Um, here are the fashion decreases, which you can kind of see a little bit. It'll be it'll be um, it'll be much more prevalent once I like block it and it gets put together. But you can see, so you're you're decreasing the neck, and this increasing, in, decreasing and increasing the sleeve at the same time. So that's probably why it's considered like an advanced pattern. There's a lot going on, um, and then you have different sections that you have your stitch markers here. So this took up a lot of a lot of my knitting time. This is a lot. This is a lot of knitting. Um, but I think it's going to be good. There was at one point where I looked at this and I was like, absolutely not. Daddy is not going to be wearing this. Um, but my mom says yes, and it's going to be cozy. And then looking at Kevin's, I think we're still on the right track. It's a, just a lot. It is. So even um, this was a lot of knitting just for me. Yeah. Um, especially because you're knitting it flat and there's a lot of purling and it's bottom up. So it's, I think it's harder, especially when you have the way that the pattern is written, you're, you're knitting a certain number of decreases and increases, you know, there's measurements in there, but they have you knitting a specific number of rows you know so you your row your row gauge i think is pretty important it is um, and i will say too i remember i did an awful job on my seaming of my sleeves because my stitch count from my sleeve to the panel was different so i had more stitches on the panel than i had on the sleeves when i went to go attach it so i had to really compensate for that well and you still have a stitch marker in there Oh, yeah, I have yeah. a hole in the arm. Um, there's a break in the yarn. But so like one sleeve, I think this one. You can't just, see it. No, you can't physically see it. I can feel it, the the ridge that it makes because I had a, you know, mattress stitching it together. I yeah. was like, okay, well, here's one on this side and let me do three stitches or whatever the case is on the yeah. other, on the sleeve. So my row gauge was definitely off, I would say. But still like super cozy, like. Yeah, super nice. This is knit out of um, Knit Picks uh, Simply Wool. Yes, it is their marled um, yarn. It's got this one is called Winkle and Wanda is the colorway. So you can see up close. I mean, in real life, you can see it uh, the marled much much more prevalently. Yeah, but it. But it's, it's very mild. Like it's yeah. super. It's just going to be. Su it's super fun. I think it created a really nice fabric. The fabric is not too loose. Like it's not too dense. I think it. You know, it looks. It looks really good. It's just. Um, and it's I will say, it doesn't really pill that much. 
Like no. based on how often I actually wear this, I don't. And think... it is still soft enough. Like I don't think it's like super rough. No, this is a lovely, yeah. lovely yarn to work with. Yeah. It is worsted weight. They do have each color in a solid. Yep. Um, so mine is Wanda and Wordsworth. But yeah, I think this is a fantastic base. It's affordable for a worsted weight yeah. yarn. Um, I bought this all on sale, you know, two years ago or last year or whatever. 2022, you bought it yeah. when their big sale in like November time. Mm-hmm. They were like $8 a skein, I or think. Or less. Yeah, I think maybe even less than that. Yeah. So I think I bought like 10 different, 10 skeins. Here, here, here it is, I think. I don't know because you have one that's very similar to it. That's not. So there. this is yours. Simply Wool Twist is what it's called. Yeah. Oh, I still have a skein of this. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a hat. Or maybe I'll do gloves. Gloves. Gloves would be good. Oh. Oh, here it is. And then this one is uh, Winkle and Wanda. So yeah, this is 218 yards for 100 grams, and it's 100% eco wool. Yeah. So, um, again, I am almost done with this panel. I have to now, at this point, all of my increases and my decreases are done. So there's some short row shaping that needs to happen for the shoulder. And then some stitches get put on hold. And then there's some short row shaping that happens for the neck um, that, uh, that will be done. And then this all gets put on hold. And then I can start the second panel. My goal was to have this finished by the end of January, but because this is so much knitting and this one panel has taken me so long, and I have been pretty monogamous on this, I don't think it's going to be done, um, you know, when it when it should be. Or no, when it's I wanted not. It to. Right when you wanted, when I wanted it to, it and to. I think it's smart when you. But I'm realize making a shit ton of progress, so right. like I think we're in a good place. I'm and when you realize place. that, it takes a little bit of the pressure off. Like you know yeah. what. I'm not getting this done. Do, do, do. Right. I know that now. Right. So I'll continue to work on it, but it also frees you. It takes some of that obligation off. Yeah, and that pressure. And it frees up your time to say, okay, maybe I'll do, you know, two inches on it a week or whatever the oh, case good is. Point. Mm-hmm. And then I can work on this. Or yeah. maybe I'll do a half an hour a day. And then the rest of my knitting time is spent on something yeah. for myself. Because I do want to get it done. Obviously, my dad definitely deserves it. You know what I yeah. mean? And he's never, like I said, never asked for anything. So I would love to be able to do it. And I will do it. It will it will get done. Um, I'm feeling much more motivated than I did two years ago, I think, you know, to get it done. So and this is my first time knitting a garment for somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Well, for an adult. For an adult. <laughs> True. Yes. Um, so I think that's all my whips. Are you done with your whips? Yeah, I'm all done too. Okay. So that is pretty much the knitting content. So next up is I will post for those that are new. I will post is just a Harry Potter reference. And it's when some of you all are very generous and send some stuff to us. So with that being said, um, we did not bring up we some of you all very generous. Very and we received some sent Christmas it. cards and some Christmas gifts from you guys. So delicious thank you. cookies and oh, you know who you are. Peanut brittle. The peanut brittle and the cookies were delicious. Stunning. There are these cookies that like I want more of, and I want to know how to make them. I think I ate them all. I don't know that you had any. What? Shh, don't worry about them. They were round. Well, don't don't talk about them. They were round. Oh, and with the little like caramel or something like that. No, the they were round, and they were like a dark brown, and then they had like sugar crystals. On it, it looked like it was pressed in. Those I didn't have so any of good. those. I know. Well, because I was sick. Um, yeah, but I was sick before you, and I didn't have any of those. We had them. For- we took them out right. Because oh. remember, we got them and we put we them took in the them freezer out the day before set, you got sick. And we said, "Oh, we'll, we'll." So you had first dibs on all the cookies. No, oh, stop being selfish. <laughs> I'm selfish. No, we took them out because we thought we were gonna. Um, have it as a dessert for Christmas. Right. So it would have been before... So you just had them as... Before you got sick because we canceled Christmas with you getting sick. Right. But we, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know who you are. Thank you because they were delicious. delicious. The peanut brittles, fantastic. Yeah. Um, we got some really nice like ornaments to add, homemade ornaments to add to our tree. and like, Some hats. And hats and like really you guys are so generous. It's yes. never expected or, you know we our hearts were very full um we just we didn't bring any of that up today because we knew it was going to be a longer a longer episode because anyway. we would and, be uh, chatty since but it's just know weeks. like how 
how much it all meant to us, um, just the Christmas cards and, I know. you know, your thoughts over the holidays and especially because we weren't feeling well and none of you know, knew that really. You yeah. Know? Um, but to, you know, to, to get the love in the mail, it was just really, uh, it really made a difference in our in our lives made us smile so thank you so much oh and an update from the last one we did end up making our poutine gravy <gasps> we did oh my god and we delicious. did serve it on top of our tater tots with some fresh mozzarella cheese and it was so good um that i need to oh, buy i want some right now i need to buy that gravy mix you know from starting. amazon we have to do a walk first before i know eat, i'm right? so hungry I yes am too. Um, can we walk anywhere and get food so then uh, we get our walk in and then we could walk down to the green like yeah. we and do what down there? I mean, there's pizza place. There's two pizza places. There's Tasty Yolk. Mm. So we have options. There's there definitely places. We still get our workout in. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely places we could walk to. Um, so that's kind of, I think, oh no. So you then have we have another post. one, right. So, um, Berry Meadow Yarns, like I said, um, or Farms, they, uh, and watch the podcast, which is always so like, I don't know the word I'm like humbling I guess yes. like we, we so, talk about things that we just we like or we see and you know with no intentions or expectations um but randomly like you know a designer something that will will like watch the episode or hear about us sharing something anyway they did and um they wanted to send you guys some prizes um and then sent Kevin and I because I was telling you about our the face and shawl how the packaging has changed so now they come in um, these totes, which are absolutely adorable. Um, May I see? I haven't actually. That's yours. Up. Thanks. I believe that one's yours. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Or quite maybe the large. red one is yours. No, I'll take. So those. she sent us Kevin and I each a tote, which I thought was so cool. Um, great size, the zipper on the top. They have the little eyelets um, here if you wanted to attach. Um, you know your keys or something like that to it or stitch markers or whatnot uh, a very deep zipper very pocket. deep zipper pocket right in the middle with their logo and scent now i didn't open these okay so i'm going to open them now i just don't know if i'll be able to get the packaging back together the way that it is so it looks like there are two of their kits here and two skeins of yarn. So the yarn, oh jeez, it's packaged so well. Do you want to just keep it as a surprise? Let's leave it as Let's a surprise. Let's leave it as a surprise, and then you can let us know what you actually got. So there are two skeins of yarn, so we'll make this a prize together. And then there are two um, kits. Two kits. I don't know if they're crochet. I don't know if they're knit. If you're interested... Um, you know what? We'll pull some winners from like from today. Okay. So let so comment down below. Um, we'll draw from a keyword, and why don't we do? Why don't we do the keyword is Abby A B B E Y A B B, because that's the name of the um, the alpaca. I was to say, well, why don't we just use the keyword kit? Okay, let's use the keyword kit. Kit. What do you? Yeah. Use the word kit. I wanted to be creative. Well, I know, but kit's easy spelling. K-I-T. Yes, kit. Okay, so keep in touch. Um, make the comments down and keep the... <laughs> can't. Mention in the comments down below the word kit, and um, you will be entered. We'll draw three winners. One will get the two skeins of yarn, and then we'll draw one each for the, uh, the prizes. Again... We don't know if they're crochet. Don't know if they're knitted. Um, they feel like the same kind of container that I showed you before with the crocheted gloves. But I think there were I think hats there is in it mm -hmm. too. So so you don't know. It could be a hat. Could be gloves. Could be could socks. Be Who knows? I don't know if you'd have alpaca socks, but um, so thank gotta, you very much. That was really really yes, super generous you. of you. Um, I had to figure out how I'm going to ship those. I need to get like a padded for these a padded envelope. I don't think so. I, it, they're metal, so I wouldn't want them like knocking around and getting dented. Oh, that's pretty diesel. We'll see. I'll figure it out. All right. But yeah, so use the keyword kit, or I mean, use the word kit in your comment, and you will be entered for that giveaway. So thank you again. Yeah, that was lovely, so, so sweet. Lovely gift. Lovely. 
Um, Thank you for the bag, Steve. So, okay, that's all um, post. That is, yeah, right. So let's talk about some acquisitions, some break in the bank. I made two purchases, and they are both books. The first one I got at Barnes and Noble. This one is called Squares, Stripes, and Lice, which sounds weird. Yeah, it's, but that's the type of stitch. I know. It's 25 traditional knitting designs from Bergen, Norway. So, I was just flipping through this one. I was at Barnes & Noble, and there were some things that caught my eye, like this pullover. Look at the pillows on the back, too. Yeah, there's pillows on the back. There is, that's a really nice one. Let's see, some of the other one. And there's like striped sweaters. There's something else. Oh, this. No, where is it? I know I didn't buy it for. Oh, you could have bought it for one. Pack. So this knows? unisex pullover. But look at the different color combinations. Yeah, it shows some patterns. color combinations. It's really inspirational. Um. Oh, this cardigan. Wait, that looks fun. Vintage Knits Reborn, it says. There's some, there's actually some dresses in here. Here is another cardigan that I just thought was really fun, the stitch pattern. Um, yeah, and there's some pillows here on the back. So I just thought it was a nice little, again, reference here. I thought this sweater was nice. So yeah, I got this, and then uh, yeah, I just thought it was really, really interesting. It is. Very cool. And then this I got while we were at Skein. I picked it up. Um, this is called Seasonless. It's by Karen Templar. It says Patterns for Life. And I put it down, and then I don't recall who it was what her name is but we've seen her several times she said that she had looked at this as well and that there's some really great information about sweaters and adjusting them and um there's a striped one in here where it gave a lot of details on like how to change the stripes and ideas like here this is called the awning stripe so you have a full-on sweater mitts a hat a cardigan and a vest so I was like, all right, twist my arm. You like here's the same type of sweater pattern or those same patterns, but that's in um all in stockinette. So it just gives you a bunch of information and different ideas. So I thought this was another good um resource to are, just kind of have patterns not in English. Yeah, see? No, the actual English. patterns. I don't know. Do you think I went that far into it? Yeah. English. 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 Okay. English. No, because it no, it's nice because it also has I don't know if it's Chinese or Japanese. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But yeah, I just no, but it's it was neat how I've never seen that before. Another you know, it talks about stitch patterns, it talks about gauge, yeah, yarn selection, fit, height, um, ways to wear them it's kind of like ideas for making what you would say maybe like a capsule type of wardrobe so oh I, thought, I love that i thought this was a very nice handy book to have yeah for sure um also at skein here's our little goodie bag that we not goodie bag this is what we purchased while we were at skein which um, we somebody very well it when i stepped out because they didn't want to show no, because I don't need the judgment. But by hiding it, it's judging more. I didn't hide anything. You did. I didn't. You just don't ask questions. So um, they had received a 
lot of new stitch stoppers, um, which we are obviously obsessed with. Um, so of course there were some holiday ones from Fox and Pine. So I'll be quick. I got some Santas. I got some more foxes. foxes. So now I have three different foxes. Here's a uh, Merry Christmas ones on ornaments, which are super cute. This one are some uh, mugs of hot cocoa. I love those. Me too. Um, some Fair Isle Colorwork socks. Speaking of Fair Super Isle. cute. Um, and then some like uh, to-go coffee cups. Wintery themed coffee cups. And we also got, I don't know why we're showing this, but I just it was in the bag. You we, lost them. I did. You know, these are so easy to lose. We have a our favorite needles, if you don't know, are uh, Chow Goos. And the we both have interchangeable sets. And sometimes we lose, I lose, the... Uh, connector the connectors piece so we got some extra connectors and then i saw this and i just couldn't say no because i i love the color i put it back a bunch of times i have no idea what i'm going to do with it i think a cowl like a nice chunky weight cowl if you have any suggestions for a chunky weight cowl pattern that might go well with this yarn let you, me know Ray, you can knit that hat that i knit from brooklyn tweed with the bulky yarn i got two i got two skeins though true you know so um, this is Malabrigo Noventa in the colorway Seahorse. It's a heavy, bulky weight yarn. It's 90 yards approximately for 125 grams. You get like 11 stitches per four inches. It's really pretty. Nine to 11. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's a really nice color. I know. I thought so too. You so, have some teals, some yeah. blues, some brown in here. Look how fun. It reminds me a little bit of the dye style of the Machetta. Machita? It is. It's the same yarn. company. I know it's the same company, but the dye style, yeah. you know? Um, it kind of smells vinegary. It does. And so I'm wondering if that's how they dye their yarn. They may I just caught a whiff of that, you know? Yeah, they may use vinegar as their as, acid. As like their acid. So um, I really, I thought it was really nice. It's super soft. I, I, I don't, what's the makeup of it? I think it's just 100%, 100%. wool. Oh, 100% mer superwash merino wool. Yeah, and it's probably, and it's, very and it's single ply calls for us 10 to 13 or six to nine millimeter needle so huge but i thought it'd be fun and i i don't know for some reason i thought it would be a cool um like bulky weight like th thick kind of cowl thing or maybe like a scarf can you do a scarf i don't know, know if you could do a scarf with that yardage you i would just search for patterns on ravelry yeah. for or if stuff. you all have any suggestions for two two skeins i want to use both of the skeins in a search by yarn instead of for a pattern yeah search the yarn and then find a pattern that uses two skeins yeah i i just um i may do that i'm i may not do that i think that's a good suggestion it's probably what we should be doing i'll do it right now no it's okay uh, maybe our friends out there can suggest some patterns which would be great that'll be a good starting point so anyway we got and i got that from what's it called nov noventa N-O-V-E-N-T-A. means like 90 or something like that. I believe, right? Is it Spanish? Is it Noventa 90? Which There's would make sense because it's like 90 yards. 26 suggestions for, and actually here is a hat that looks like it's using the same yarn. Correct, but I want to use both of the skeins in one project. So here's a cow. How many skeins in here? You need 90 yards, so that's one skein. Okay. Anyway, or maybe I can make two of them. Maybe we can give them as gifts. Okay, the last thing that I want to quickly talk about is that Kevin and I both got the um, their, the advent for Max and Vincent over at Le Garçon. Yes. Comes in a really fun bag. I just want to show you the colors. Um, there's a really cool pattern that also goes with it. It's called the uh, Frost Fangs, Frost Fangs um, Scarf. But I just wanted to show you the colors because I absolutely love these. We've got like three skein, three full skeins, scar full two full skeins, skeins of yarn, and um, a bunch of minis. But with the colors all together, it like looks so nice. Look at all these colors. It is. And then you get they're so pretty. There's some candles in there. There were um, comes with this. Yep, bag. I showed that already. Oh, I'm sorry. And then one candle, and there was an ornament. Yep, we have the ornaments were already on our tree, so there we took our Christmas down. So this candle, which is called 
For oh, frozen forest. Yeah. Have you smelled it? Yeah. It smells so good. It's like a freaking Christmas tree. Yeah. Like you're at a farm. And then it came with a sticker and some scissors from Merchant uh, and Mills. Merchant and Mills. Really fun. Um, the the scarf that it makes, the Frost Fangs scarf. I have that link down below. But um, one of the people that I work with is actually is also a knitter, and I see her occasionally. She's one of the uh, the physicians, the providers there, and. Um, she came in the other day and she was like, um, she had finished the scarf using this all the yarn. I took pictures of it and stuff because I thought it was stunning. It looks absolutely incredible. So if you haven't checked that out yet, um, check that out for sure. So I guess I'm going to show mine because you haven't seen any of this. This is my. I thought mag- you weren't going to show this. I no, I, w- I said I wasn't going to show the Lake Arson one, but you showed yours. Obviously, mine is exactly the same. But I also bought the Magpie um, Celestial Advent. So here's what came in it. It came with a embroidery kit, so you can embroider your zodiac sign. I didn't know that. I haven't seen any of it. You this. haven't seen any of it. So it came with a mug that says um, Celestial Celebration by Magpie Fibers. That's nice. Is that glass? It's ceramic. Ceramic. And it came with some tea. This is tea Ooh. with tay. And this one is called Winter Bliss. Tea with jam and bread with jam. Also mm. came with a candle called Dose of Peace. Oh, that's nice. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. Like clean. It came with a body cream from Sweet Cream. What's the flavor on that? Um, it came with this little like notions dish. <gasps> That's fun. Is that wooden? No, it's um, ceramic. And then... Original. You got one full skein of yarn. So it's like a purpley navy. Yeah. And then all of the minis were based on the Zodiac. The only thing is is that the sign is was like on these little cards in the package. So, you know, it just said Leo. So I don't know which one's actually which. I'm sure I bet you can find out for people who were super ordinary. She got 12 Look minis. Look how cute these little skeins are. Oh my God, they're, they're beautiful. Full size skein. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but look how f- the, the colors are like happy. They're yeah, all like so here's very the happy colors. Color palette. Mm, like pastel-y happy. So I think what I might do with this potentially is I might do a... The habitation throw. Mm. Is, are there ago. pattern suggestions for this one specifically? Or no? it came with a pattern. I'm not going to do the pattern that it came with. Okay. Um. It, oh, and it also came with a nice stitch marker from um, Sassafras pretty. Knits, who we got to meet yeah. last time or in May when we went to Magpie. Um, I got one of her stitch markers. That was the mushroom one, which is one of my favorites because I think it's. So fantastic. Oh, and it came with... What's in here? Oh, some buttons. Buttons. So yeah, I thought this was a really great thing. And what was really fun is that with each of the extras, it shows one of the staff members and, you know, kind of why they picked the item. So I thought that was really clever and sweet to have in here. Um... I love this little bowl. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's just really, really cute. I thought, it, I mean, not that I'm going to do it, but imagine just putting a little succulent it's in like there. It's like slate or something. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, a little succulent would be cute. Right? In there. Yeah. Or you can, like, knit or crochet a cute little succulent. Oh, true. Right? So, yeah, so you I thought have to that worry was about the water. Really nice. It was different than, obviously, any of the other advents yeah. that I've purchased before because it had all these little extras. Um,. And like I said, it was packaged in three individual large boxes, and each right. one of those had seven boxes in it. And they were all labeled nicely for yes. what day you had to open. Yeah, it was really, really well yeah. done. So yeah. highly recommend next year if you're in the market for an advent and you want to try somebody new, definitely check out um, Magpie Fibers advent. Totally. Yeah. And I think that's all of that. So next up on the agenda is what we've kind of been reading and watching. So watching... 
the main watch has been um, Criminal Minds. I am now on season seven of I think Criminal we just Minds. Finished season six, yeah. So you're season seven, I think. Yeah, somewhere within season seven. So I watched I watched that pretty much <laughs> the entire time I was sick, and then we just kind of been continuing here or there at night. What I like about that show is that like you can I can come in. And just watch an episode, right? Yes. Like a couple of different episodes. And they're great because they're standalone. Like, yes, there's some connections. But that serial TV, like I feel like we don't have serial TV anymore. No, you know? we don't like, have. Or whatever that the episodic TV. Like, yeah. Where each episode could be a standalone thing. So it's nice to just like come home from work. You're watching them or whatever. And like just plop down on the couch and still watch and not have a million and one questions. Correct. Right? Like, yeah. oh, what happened here? And why are they doing this? Um, And then we've... We had started season three of Picard. Yeah. So we're kind of in the middle of that. We are. I don't, which, we haven't watched in a while, so I'm not We haven't sure watched we it bef- since before we got sick. Right. Um, and then, you know, we did the typical Christmas movie type of thing, Hallmark Christmas movies, and then some of the classics. We, we did just, We did a ton of Christmas movies the last three days leading up to Christmas. Yeah. I feel like it was just nonstop. And there was one that was new to us. It was a Netflix one, and it's called A Boy Named Christmas. <gasps> yeah. And it was really, really cute. If you haven't watched it, I would definitely recommend that. Was that was cute. Oh, and the other one. I know what you're going to say. It was great. Um, what the hell was it called? It was animated, and yeah. it's like... <laughs> Anna, Anna. Nimona? Nimona? Nimona. N-I-M-O-N-A. And it is based on a comic book or a graphic novel. It was so enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved, loved, Me loved too. that movie. It was great. The animation was was wonderful. The voice acting was wonderful. It the story was great. It really, really was. Yeah, um, that was so entertaining. Such a surprise. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how we. I think we were just scrolling through mm-hmm. and we watched the trailer for it, and we were like, "Oh, that sounds right, really sold. fun. Let's yeah. watch it." It was great. We did watch two additional movies that. One, we liked one more than the other, I think. Oh, three really. additional. So we watched two movies from Apple TV+. Plus. Yep. We watched The Marsh King's Daughter yep. with Daisy Ridley. And that one was good. That it was, was good. A it slow was burn. slow burn. Yeah, um, I agree. Based on the trailer, I thought it was going to be a little more action-y than it was. Yeah. I said to Ray after watching it, it kind of reminds me or gives me the idea of this is what the life would be like of somebody that we would have seen on a Criminal Minds episode 20 years later, like it, or 10 years or whatever the case is. Like it kind of had that feel. Yeah. So that one, we liked it. It wasn't, I wouldn't give it like a five star. I would say like maybe, no, a maybe three. three and a half. Yeah. Um, the other one that we watched was called. I don't even remember the name of it. Breakwater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Um, the only actor I knew that I know of of the top of my head is um, Dermot Mulroney. And this one was a thriller, kind of. But it was so predictable. It was. There were a lot of holes in the plot, too. Yeah. I thought they rushed a couple of things. I bet it was a good book, because I think it's based on a book, right? Yeah, I would give that maybe two stars. Yeah, same. It was. I mean, we we watched it. It kept us yeah. busy for two hours. But. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't awful. Like right, but it wasn't fantastic by any means. And then the third movie we watched was Saltburn. <gasps> I forgot. Which yo, <laughs> that one is very talented, Mister Ripley like, and it is very graphic. Very graphic. So if I you, had to turn away a couple of times. Yeah, not they're, like they're murdery couple, graphic. Just, sexually graphic yeah so if that's not, not like your, showing the actual s- s- i mean it's so hard there's to a lot in there there's and a lot in there chip and i were talking about it earlier this week and you know and there's so much that's like how much of it was just done for like <gasps> shock factor? value yeah instead of adding to the movie i think it all added to the movie i it thought added it added to the care it added to his mental state i thought it was really good it was very interesting it, but again, very graphic. So if that's not your thing, don't watch. Um, but it's like ugh, it's so hard to explain without giving anything away. But it's like it, it, it built it. I felt that it was very 
purposefully done and i get where you guys were what you were talking about but i i think all of those scenes added to the mystery the yes but also to like shape our understanding of of what was going on in this and like just how messed up this dude was yeah it's like it just kept adding layers on layers until finally you get to the point where like there's no question that it's just messed up and there are some mom- some moments where you're like oh it's over and then it's not and you're like yeah. but the- like honestly the acting i thought was fantastic yeah the the family every like the characters i thought were were really good like you felt like you were in the movie like you know you felt the bonds that some of these people had you felt like the just how this the people's lives are just so messed up i know i don't um, know I so do yes. recommend it to watch it once. I could never watch it a second time. I would watch it again because oh. I, after getting over the oh, shock maybe, value, I like, want to see if I if miss little stuff. ticks or right. things like that. Maybe. Um, so again, maybe. do not watch it if you don't like sexually graphic things. That's a good way. But it's yes. not like you're not watching. I know, but there's. I know. I know. Without giving anything away, there are just some scenes that are can be disturbing. So don't yeah. watch it if you don't like that. Yeah, triggering for sure. A lot All of right. triggering. So on to reading. I forgot about that. I have read three books. It was a trilogy. Um, it is called the the Tarot Sequence by K. D. Edwards. I absolutely love this series. It's really interesting because it somebody here recommended it to me probably that first year of podcasting, and it was kind of in my queue. I started the first book, which was called The Last Sun. And I read a chapter and then I just like kind of stopped and I went back to it recently because our friend Jeff had asked about it and he read it and it is considered a male male like paranormally supernaturally romance but there's actually not much there's very few graphicness to it like anything actually added to the development of the characters Mm -hmm. so in this book it takes place in modern times but there at, are Atlanteans and there's magic in the world. There was a war which um, in the, I forget if it was like the 40s or 50s, somewhere in that time frame. Um, and Atlantis was destroyed. It was an island. And because of the war and its destruction, Atlantis was rebuilt and New Atlantis is located on Nantucket. So you follow Rune, who is the last survivor of the Rune, or I'm sorry, of the Sun Throne. Each of the families are named after tarot card. So Mm -hmm. you have like Sun, um, Death, Strength, Justice, Hanged Man, things like that. So I think there's 22. Wow. Prominent I don't know how many. Well, the major arcana. Right. In the, the tarot. Ma- and so, and that's, so the major arcana, he is an arcana. Okay. And, and you, and there's the head of each of the family. And then the head of the family, they all sit around, like, we'll call it a round table. And they are the arcanum. Um, so his family is destroyed. He is the last survivor of his family. Um, and he has a companion who's kind of like his protector. His name is Brandon, but he goes by Brand. And through the series, a bunch of different characters add to their family. Mm-hmm. Um, and you find out a little bit about what happened in while why the Sun Throne was destroyed. And you learn a little bit more in each of the books. So book one is The Last Sun. Book two is The Hanged Man. And book three is the hourglass throne. So in each one, there's another bad guy. The third one might be my favorite book. Um, There were just so many interesting elements to that. And as far as I know, I believe it's going to be a nine book series. It definitely left it open to figure out what happened to his family and who, um, who destroyed it. Because it wasn't a sanctioned, as far as we know, it wasn't a sanctioned, um, I forget what they call it, 
a sanctioned overthrow of the throne. Mm -hmm. Like, they will do that. The hourglass throne is one of them that was destroyed because the family, like, did something bad or misused the magic. Um, And magic in this is very interesting because it's not, like your typical magic system, they have what they call sigils and each sigil can store a spell and the strength of it would depend on like how much you meditate on it and so on and so forth. But sigils aren't enough. Not everything can be a sigil. It has to be crafted as a sigil. And that art has kind of been lost so it's they're not common you can't just like go out and really buy one or if you can it's incredibly expensive um and everybody has different powers but the the funny thing with atlanteans and this is that they've kind of lost their way from where they were in the past Mm. where now they use these sigils to make sure that they're lips are always red or that they don't show wrinkles or that their eyes sparkle when they smile. So they use it. They're very entitled. Some of them. So I don't know. It was, I just thought it was a fantastic yeah, series. It sounds really I, good. I really, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. And then I'm currently reading vicious by V E Schwab. This one is like all about the villains. There's no, That's as far as I can tell, there's going to be no good guys in it. Um, I'm not very far into it. I'm maybe about 20% in, and we are following Victor and Eli. And it goes back from the, or to the past and present. So 10 years and then anywhere from present day to within like a two day period of that, two days in the past from present. Um, These are highly intelligent individuals who in college they have to pick their thesis and one does um, it on adrenaline and the other is doing their thesis. Eli is his is on extraordinaries people who are gifted Mm -hmm. and his thesis now is that people who aren't born that with this extra ability, it is comes from a near death experience. And so we're at that point where they're starting to test this thesis but you also find out that they're enemies Mm. uh and you don't know why so so far i'm enjoying it 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 appears to be a i don't know if it's gonna be more than two books but there are currently two books in the series great and that is it lovely i um i did let's see i finished the Murderbot Diaries System Collapse, which was the seventh book in the series. I'm 100% done with that now. I love the books. I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Um, our main character is uh, a robot, basically. And um, he gets into some shenanigans and makes some friendships, though he doesn't call them friendships. And it's really funny. It's action-packed, uh, s- suspenseful. Um, it takes place in a very futuristic uh, worlds, worlds, space travel and technology and stuff. But I, uh, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Um, the next book that I listened to on Audible was a, I think it's an Audible original. It's called The Downloaded by Robert J. Sawyer. It was a pretty short listen, uh, relatively speaking. It was basically, um, it basically. The concept is that, you know, we can, like, freeze our bodies. You've heard the stories. I'm sure you freeze your body until, like, science has a cure for, you know, cancer, X, Y, Z, that you were getting ready to, like, you were died from or whatever the case is. So the technology was there to freeze and and thaw out and cure the bodies. Um, However, determined that the mind... um, would not catch up to that and you're you're you lost your consciousness during the process um so new technology was developed to put your mind in sort of like a quantum computer have your body frozen you know and then there the process then would be as you are cured you can then reintegrate your mind um, back into your body so 
<clears throat> what ends up happening is that now that this technology is available for us to put our minds in this quantum computer, take it away like out of the body, how you perceive that time could be sped up or slowed down. So say, you know, you're put in for a week, it could make you can make it they can make it seem like it's been a year. You can have like a year's worth of experiences or it could be like a day, right? You can shorten or speed up the time. So um, the the concept of the book is that there are two individual group, two groups um, that are put into this state. One is uh, a set of prisoners who they during the testing test phase of this technology, prisoners were the consciousness was removed from their bodies. Their bodies were frozen, cry, cryo, cryogenics, whatever. Um, and then their consciousness was also put into a prison, but in their consciousness was kind of slowed down so that 20 years imprisonment, uh, their 20 year sentence or whatever it was, um, got to take place in maybe a two year period on earth, you know, or regular time. So the next piece was a set of astronauts who were going to this star that they found a habitable planet around um, to decrease the journey of this group to uh, a perceived journey to the star. There's a, a, a global catastrophe that happens, and instead of a you know five year period, whatever it is, five hundred years passes, and all of these people's consciousness are stuck in their relatively like their relative um, you know like groups or whatever. So five hundred years passes, but some of the groups don't experience that you know that time frame. It's it's that pre programmed time frame. So they all end up starting to wake up. Um, in this post-apocalyptic world where there is no uh, no Earth anymore, basically. Like, the Earth is there, but there was a nuclear fallout. We find out a couple of different things. So um, they try, to, they figure out how to try to, like, work together, I guess, and how they're going to survive and kind of, like, repopulate the species and, like, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. That was really, really good. Um there's some additional things get thrown in and some some extra drama um so it's called the downloaded because these minds are are being re-downloaded um again but uh but really cool i, I found it really uh interesting the voice acting was lovely it was not just one person it felt like you were watch you were listening to a complete like radio show Back in the olden days, there were about four the or five days. in the olden days. There were like four to five to maybe six different actors that were playing oh, nice. different parts. So it was really cool. And there were sound effects. Um, it was a really a whole production. So I highly recommend for those of you who have Audible um, to go ahead and give that a listen. It was definitely worth the credit that I spent on it. So that was a long time to talk about that book, but I found it was a really cool experience. I did give it four stars. Um, I wanted it to last a little bit longer, and there are some holes um, I think in the story, but overall it was really entertaining. The next book that I read was The Engineer. It's book two of the last uh, Horizon series um, by Will White. It uh, is the same author of uh, our, what is it called? Our beloved Cradle series. Cradle series. Um, it's a mix of like magic and technology. And um, there is this, legendary ship that um it's a magical ship that um you need to have a specific person in each crew position to kind of unlock this ship's abilities so um our last piece of the crew was the engineer we were waiting to bring on the engineer to kind of fully establish all of the crew from the ship um, and unlock the ship's abilities. The ship was fully conscious. Um, it is a female persona. And then our captain is a very, very strong wizard. And then the rest of the crew are kind of like a ragtag band of uh, people who have special abilities. And they're all chosen for their special abilities to help enhance the ship. Um, there's another group that ha also have like superpowers, but that's... Um, that they get from technology. It's really interesting. Um, it's an interesting take on merging magic and technology. And it's very, very like, there's a lot of detail in world building, just like the Cradle series. Mm -hmm. Each group of people have its own like 
cast system? Yeah, cast system and and what they you know really really interesting. I'm looking. I very much look forward to where this is going. This is free on Amazon Prime. Uh, Amazon. On um, Kindle. Yeah, Kindle. Yeah, Amazon or Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited. Thank you. Um, so I highly recommend if you want. It's only book two. If you want to get into the series, I think I think it's really entertaining for me. And then I'm listening to right now uh, Ready Player One which i loved the movie the book is nothing like the movie kevin had said this last time he read it um it's by ernest klein it's incredible incredible five stars already i have a little bit of fanboying going on because will wheaton is for those of you who don't know plays wesley crusher on star trek the next generation he's also a huge nerd he's a gamer he likes to like board games and stuff he's very much into like old like 80s and 90s kind of um 70s like um fun stuff and uh he is the narrator and he does a great job it's really funny because they mention actually will wheaton in the book oh so him like reading about himself like i thought was really interesting i'm almost done i'm like about a half uh, hour away from finishing that book but i cannot recommend it enough um so good so so good and the audible version is fantastic will wheaton is a god uh reading this i think is great I'm also, um, I just started on Kindle Unlimited. No, Kindle. I actually paid for this book, I think. No, it's Kindle Unlimited. It's called Nettle and Bone. It's by T. Kingfisher. It's also a, um, there's like a magic system in here. I'm not quite sure where we are with that yet, but it's, um, there's like kings and princes and stuff the way that, uh, like similar to kind of like King Arthur's legend type of situation, like, but there, I just I'm just started it. So um, one of the princesses is trying to save her sister from an evil prince, and she's seeking out the help of um, somebody called a, a dust woman, and and this is somebody who like over like I guess can talk to the dead and lives in graveyards, um, but practices like magic. Um, and not magic like magic wands and things, but like using spells and items like, um, you know, like pigeon feathers and different things like that. Like, um, so this woman is on a journey to get her, the dust woman's help. And, um, she starts making these magical items and now they're on a journey because this woman agreed to help her. Now they're on a journey to go and actually like try to kill this prince who is doing bad things to her sister. Um, so I'm I, like, again, I just started. So I'm assuming the, the book is going to be about their adventure getting back there. And then like how maybe she's going to develop some of these magic powers. I'm not quite sure. But so far, it's good. I like the writing style. Um, it's easy to read. And it's easy to inflect like some of the emotions that the author is trying to get across. And that's it. Beautiful. Yeah. I and love talking about books. You too. Sorry. No, it's great. So much fun. No, <laughs> Jack. I can't stand you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is everything. It that's was a, a long one. We made up for the short one last time. We've added about an hour onto that last episode. This one. So we appreciate you sticking around if you stuck around to the end. Um, we will be back in a fortnight. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say reminder about our giveaway yes, that we're going to be doing. Kit. Use the word kit. kit. And, and please, um, we will announce the winner on the next podcast. We didn't mention Correct. that before. We do say this often. Um, do not respond to any messages that you receive um, on, inst- on uh, YouTube or Instagram or anywhere else. Um, that may look like it's coming from Needles at the Ready, we will only announce winners on the podcast in this kind of format. Yes. And going back, if you have not reached out to us and you were one of the winners for the um, crochet patterns from Austin Crochets, definitely reach out to us. If we um, don't hear from anybody by next episode, we'll just pull new winners. Um, So that is everything, guys. I hope that That you guys are doing well, that you had a great holiday season. And, um, you know, if you're going to be at Vogue Knitting Live, leave a comment down below. Let us know. And we will um, be back in two weeks. So we will see you all in a fortnight. Bye. Bye.